Laura, you're good to go. Hey guys, welcome to The Keep. Thank you for joining us on this awesome adventure. Um, this is super exciting. I don't think we really have a whole lot of news. We just hope that everybody's been staying safe, staying healthy, washing your hands. Um, we? No, no, Jonathan, shaking your head. Um, unless anybody has any other announcements, let's go ahead and we'll just jump right in. Are we good to go? Do it! Right. Uh, oh, one announcement, one announcement. Yes. Please, because uh, apparently I don't put this out there enough, I think. Um, I've been told. Uh, VODs are available uh, Tuesdays at midnight. So Monday at 11.59, colon 59. Uh, they are available um, uh, all our VODs. Uh, Twitch only holds so many. Um, and YouTube holds the rest. So, uh, yeah, uh, go check us out. Uh, it's the same handle as Twitch, uh, the Keep RPG. Um, you can also find us at our website, uh, thekeeprpg.com, and uh, there's a whole bunch of information updated there. That, uh, yeah. So, I've been told I need to plug that more. So, there it is. There's your plug. Also, check us out on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, if you check out the Instagram, you'll see a bunch of the minis that we've been working on, slowly building our collection and painting those up. And that's exciting, and I'm pretty proud of what we've done there. So you should definitely check those out. Um, without further ado, we'll go ahead and we'll jump into the game for today. Uh, so last Do we have an <laughs> Nope, no intro today. We are jumping right into the recap. Uh, Do you so want an last intro? Hmm? Do you want an intro? Would you like to do an intro for us, Kazator? Oh, there, uh, there was mention of a, a specific aesthetic that we have going on right now because of our Skype conferencing uh, sessions here. And it, it was too good to pass up. So if I can spoof intro us. Amazing. I'm spilling dice here. Do this. Okay. Wait, that messed up. Walter, <laughs> <laughs> the best form of comedy. Good start. We're gonna get it together. Quick, quick, full time. Can you hear that? Don't let the dead air happen. No. Maybe not. Okay, we're going to forgo the music, and I'm going to do the acapella. It's fine. All right. This is the story of a sneaky DM who was crafting schemes and trying to TPK. She had vampires, wolves, and beholders. She might succeed one day. This is the story of some ragtag misfits who were busy with scheming of their own. They were six guys and a little halfling, and they were far from home. Till the one day when they all came to the sanctum, and they found together they possessed great power, and it became their it became their home, and this became their family. Born into the world was eleventh hour. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Very nice. Okay, well, I think for for now, until we actually get back to the table, we can play our video. That's just going to be our standard. That's it, Jordan. So, uh, yeah, that's figure that out. Yep. Wow. Yep. Okay. Yay! <laughs> so, for the fifth time, we try to jump into the game. <laughs> <laughs> With that marvelous introduction, uh, the last we left our heroes, Eleventh Hour, had. <laughs> um, you had met up with Rai, our, our lovely guest player, in Grimhold. You had left on the yes. search for the third journal on this world that you were claiming. Um, you were making your way uh, from Grimhold to Whitebrand, the general location of the third journal. You were waylaid by slavers for really the aftermath 
of a group of slavers. You went, uh, you did what you do best and slaughtered them all to the last man person thing. Um, and you uh, saved the captains. You had some, some discussion with them, uh, especially Rai, after discovering that a number of them were not as humanoid as they appeared, that they, like Rai, were tieflings who disguised their uh, less than human form, more than human form, their different form, uh, to maintain a safer disguise in current society. You set them well on their way and continued on your path, and when last we left off with technical issues, you were uh, approaching White Brand. So... Oh, yeah. Exactly what we are going to start with. So, Kazator. Forgot about that. <laughs> oh, I had not. I really hope you enjoy this because this is going to be fun. So, is the tour. The night of the solstice, you know, to be full of magical power, uh, you know that you need three components for this ritual that you're going to undergo to uh, attempt to retrieve Jojo to call to him again. You need some sort of fur, some sort of feather, and some sort of scale. I have owlbear feathers. Somebody mentioned scale, I think, Doran. Yo. You had a scale? A red, red dragon scale. Okay. I don't know why I had it. I just happened to have it. Um, we got it back when we got the bag of holding. It was one yeah. of the things in it. Oh. And it, what we already set, tried to check, and it was not magical, right? I mean, it's as magical as a red dragon scale it is, so take is that, that for what's Apparently magical. Well, if I were to breathe on it, it wouldn't hurt it much, because, you know, red dragons and fire. Yeah. Right. Dragons are innately magical. If I breathe fire for fun, so... Fire would hurt it. Is that because of what it's made of, or because it has a magical essence? It's, its nature is innately magical because it's a dragon. Okay. Cool. Well, unless anybody is opposed to using it and saving it for something else. It's literally been in my pocket for like a thousand years. I, I don't want to think this for it. Sweet. Go pocket scale. Holy a little moldy. Um, okay, and then fur. Did somebody mention having some sort of fur or something, or were, you, were we talking about taking a snip snip from... Uh, well, we have a giant beast covered in fur. That's what I'm saying. Take a snip sit from uh, Night Beast. I imagine he sheds, so just pet him a couple times. You'll get a fistful of it. Yeah. Just I think just approaching it. with his hand versus a knife is great. Pet groomer. That is a pet groomer. Okay, Zotar. No. Yeah. You, take your, you take your inherently magical components on a very powerfully magical night. And you prepare this ritual to awesome. summon your familiar. Magically. Uh, you start out drawing the runes and creating the circle. Uh, you have the incense that you burn to uh, call forth your familiar spirit. And as you prepare the space, uh, this fog of spectral forms starts to arise from the ground, almost like they condense from the air surrounding the circle. Uh, you continue with the ritual, and then you, it comes time for you to place the components. You take your fur, you take your feather, you take your scale, and you know that there are three, uh, three locations, uh, to the left, to the right, and to the center, and you know that the center location... Uh, is is a location of prominence within this ritual. Where do you place the components? I see what she's doing here. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't see what yeah. she's doing. Um, I just have to make decisions. Um, mm -hmm. I think... I will place the scale on the left. Uh, 
on your left. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was a good move, man. Yeah, I think that that's hard. I think we're going to put the fur in the center and the feather on the right. So the weasel is a friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, ah, yes, that's, yes, that is the decision. All right. You place the components, the fur in the center. There's a, as the ritual continues, and you continue to chant, there's a flash of light and almost a dimming as your form also takes on a spectral appearance, you can see more clearly this fog of spectral figures around you are now resembling the shape of various animals, various beasts that have come to the call for the ritual. And as your form becomes spectral, the world begins to fade away around you. There's a darkness that overcomes you. You have to blink for a couple of moments, and your eyes, as they become accustomed to this new light, you see... You're no longer in the same place that you were. You don't feel as though your body has moved, but your mind has started to perceive a new area. Uh, where you can see, uh, there are two paths in front of you. Uh, you're in a forested area. The, the wind is blowing softly in your face. To your left is a wider path. It is straight. It is clearly delineated. The trees are cut back a little ways away from it. It is a fairly safe path. To the right, branching off of this road, is a more overgrown path, less traveled. It is narrow, it is unkempt, and it leads into a darker section of the forest. Which path do you take? Two paths diverging of wood. I took the one less traveled. I feel like... Wes, you never take the obvious path. <laughs> so then... I'm gonna say with all of with all of Case Tour's reading that he's done, he would take the seemingly more difficult path. Okay. Just taking a cue from from literature, he's gonna go right. Okie poke. I am marking down a couple just of like things. Like you take that path. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay. I was never heard from again. As you start taking the more narrow path, you walk for a little ways, although you don't feel your body moving. But the forest passes through you. You go and you start to hear these strange sounds. There are sounds of branches breaking in the distance, a few guttural growls that start to surround you. What do you do? I stop and look around? All right. You stop, you pause for a few moments, the sounds start to get louder. The growling becomes more aggressive, almost, leading into what becomes a threatening roar that echoes and shakes the leaves on the trees around you. Um, the tree, it shake. okay, so this sounds like something large. It does. I don't know what's possible in this place that I'm in, but I'm going to... How is how high is the canopy above me? Uh, about 10 or 12 feet, the branches start to really curve and cover over you. There are some lower branches that are uh, thinner. They're not as strong, but can probably function as uh, stepping. Um, like can a I step ladder to get up to the, back, the canopy, if you'd like. Can I see sky at all? You do not. The I'm branch try. is breaking, the leaves are shaking, it's coming forward. What do you do? I'm going to try and invoke my celestial legacy with the wings. Does it work here? I don't... <laughs> it does. Do I get spectral? The wings flash out, the, the, the light illuminates this area. Um, you can... There, <laughs> there is a, a brief, uh, uh, sort of, um, not, not whiplash, but the, a brief, um, clamor. And then 
the sounds slowly start to, to dissipate and diminish. Um, the, the growling fades. You close your eyes, you blink, and you are in a new location. You are in a stone room, round. Uh, there are no doors, no windows, no entrances or exits that you can see. You're in the center of this room, and you're surrounded by eight pedestals. And on each of these pedestals, these small waist-high columns, there are items. Starting in front of you and going clockwise, you see a knife, a torch, a rope, a mirror, a hand crossbow, a water skin, a trowel, and a pen and inkwell. What do you do? Completely closed off stone room, eight stools with stuff on them. Yep. Remember that part of your song about yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, at least you can't teach me K. I'm by myself. Uh, I okay. Can you? I'm sorry. Can you list items one more time? Yeah. I think so I know. Starting in front of you, going clockwise. A knife, a torch, a rope, a mirror, a hand crossbow, a water skin, a trowel, and a pen and inkwell. I'm probably going to go to the pen and ink. All right. Marking that down here. Based on all your decisions, JoJo's permanent form is Caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> um, as you take the pen and ink out in your hand, you're transported. You see yourself in a, a, a large room, and you have just enough time to realize that this is a library. There are books surrounding you. Before you blink again, and a wave of heat washes over you, you open your eyes, and there's a flash of light, and the room is in flames around you. You look around. There is a clear path between you and an exit leading outside. The books are burning you see paper starting and ash starting to fill the air. The fire is spreading, and you hear a cry from deeper within. You cannot see anything, but farther into the library, there is someone calling for aid. What do you do? I check my spells. <laughs> uh, As you I pause, pass, you think I, over the spells you put. Go ahead. Okay, I cast heroism on myself and, and go towards the cries. Okay. So you leap farther into the flames. Yeah. You leap farther into the flames, um, launching yourself. There's another flash of darkness. You open your eyes. The smell of smoke is gone. The heat is gone. You look around. You're in a very familiar banquet hall. The faces of your family surround you. They're expectant. They're looking at you. There's an expectant, awaiting silence. And you realize you lived through this moment. This moment <sighs> right before you confront your family. You're cruel! Uh-huh, uh-huh. They're watching you. What do you do? Um. I look for my sister. You look for your sister. Um, she is in the room. She is sitting a little ways away from you. Uh, she's also watching you. I try and approach her. You approach. You start leaving your spot, and the vision seems to dissipate. You look around. You're back with your companions with the 11th hour. You know, this last part of the ritual 
is not something you've done before, but you get the sense with these spectral forms around you, which are diminished. There are fewer in number now than there were when you started. They seem to be watching you. They seem to be waiting. And there's a voice in the back of your head asking you to give something of yourself. What do you give? Left, left kidney. Um, your second death saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, half a second. Can you give your last success? So you only need two successes to come back. <laughs> hey, um, I. Does it? Does there seem to be any? place for me to, to lay something, to place something? Um, actually, yes. Uh, you look around and you feel as though you, you never felt yourself move, but you definitely started on the outside of the circle and you are now seated in the center. There is okay. an empty space, not covered with any runes, where the incense had burned away in the brazier. Okay. Right in front of you. I will take out um, my harmonica that I made and place it there. All right. With a brief flash of flame, it is consumed by the spell. Twinge of regret. Most of the spectral forms seem to drift away. There are four that remain in front of you. You see a hawk fox, a badger, an iguana, and an octopus. What do you choose? Can I get a clarity on what is a hawk fox? It appears to be a, a small vulpine creature with wings. Octopus. Go for the octopus. <laughs> Do it, coward. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I will peer put your head into this. Um, How do you think Dwarf got a girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> that was Garrett uh, talking. There was, okay, so there's the octopus, the iguana, the, iguana, the hawk fox. <laughs> and the badger. And a badger? It's just, I almost asked that. Um, uh, I mean... Don't choose wrong, you. I'm trying, yeah, I'm trying to decide, like, it, it, um... I get. I, it's got to be the yeah. It's got to be the hawk fox. That just seems like the the yes. I'm, I, will, I will approach the hawk fox or, or yeah. All right. You reach out. You take your hand and you touch the form of the hawk fox. The other forms seem to to dissipate. The fog that it comprises their bodies uh, seems to blow away in this mist. You feel a warmth coming into your hands as the form of the hawk box too seems to dissipate, but it seems to grow and it seems to burn. But as you look down, it's actually as though uh, a dark ink is spreading up your arm and onto your chest. Over your heart, you're forming a tattoo of the hawk fox, the same uh, shape that you had chosen. And you feel a mental connection form with Jojo. Okay. The ritual is complete. I will get you the oh, stats for his new form here uh, this week. As I reach out and touch him, I'm just saying, You got a friend in me. <laughs> you got a friend in me. All right. Okay. I'm excited. 
So does, that, does, the, does the mental connection feel different than, like, just my typical, like, looking through his senses or communicating with him telepathically? Does it feel like it's changed? It feels solid. It feels very steady. Um, there is a, a two-way communication with him, even though he is not physically present before you, that you did not have before. And you get the sense that even though his physical form is not here, he is still connected to you when he is not in his space, in this space. So, no pressure. Don't squish him again. <laughs> did squish him. Okay. As the the ritual ends, I just I just come back to it. I'm, I guess, there in the midst of the party. Mm-hmm. You're seated in the center of the circle, and the party is around you, having been doing whatever they were doing for the last hour. Okay. Um, as okay. it is the solstice, and later in the evening, you know Val has probably gone off to make his usual connections with Rissa, as he does in the evenings, just getting the updates from what's been happening with the rest of the sanctum. Um, whatever, what have the rest of y'all been doing in the evenings as you've been traveling? Um, I would have been knowing what we could be up against and seeing how we had weeks of travel ahead of us. I figured each evening, whoever is willing to learn, I would have been giving basic instruction on uh, infernal phrases in case we happen to come across any devils. So nothing like super complicated, just simple like uh, directions, locations, things like that, just to establish if they were to overhear devils speaking, um, they may be able to pick up. Hello. Hence, uh, hence yeah, there is yeah no el- elements of what that, of what they might be saying. So I don't know who would be willing to listen, but if anybody was willing to learn, I would. Yeah, totally. <laughs> okay. Stuff. I probably wouldn't be would good like at it. To participate but... in these lessons. Go ahead and make intelligence checks. For those who are willing to try. Can I get advantage for my sage background? Well, and I was I don't know if um, this would give anyone advantage, but I will say Riot's probably on the off corner writing to you out, out and interjecting to correct. Correct. Uh, so correct. Correct. Uh, correct. Uh, so I <laughs> 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 You know, with rice assistance, I'll say go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah maybe a little check with advantage. Yay! Oh, that was a natural one and a 19. Oh, my God. That's a natural one and a 19. Oh, you know how to swear. I mean, I still remember those. Yeah. That's the important part. Nat 20. All right. Nice. Nice. You said these were never going to roll another one today. Yes, just intelligence. Uh, 18. 18. 22. 19 plus 0. Nice. Yeah. Alright, so y'all are starting to get the, um general gist of some of the sounds and how it works out is a very uh, challenging language because most of y'all don't actually have the um, the necessary parts of your, your vocal cords and, and how the tongue moves to uh, speak it without uh, an accent. So we say, so you're starting to get things figured out. You're picking up a couple of words here and there. Everyone except for Doran, who is just not able to really make the connections. He keeps accidentally swearing at y'all and getting words mixed up. And... <laughs> Having I also have given up on that. Accidentally. I would also say that I will emphasize more of their ability to understand it, not so much as to speak it, but for eavesdropping more than conversing. Obviously, conversing is a part of it, but if they can't speak it fluently, I'm more willing to see over that as long as they can understand what is being said. Alright. Just for whatever y'all end up writing down on your sheets. Um, this language is hard. 
Having given up on that, I probably would want to, I don't know, talk to whoever knows about Beholders and uh, learn about them a little bit. Because I know somebody, somebody said or mentioned to us something about making gifts and, you know, what might a beastie want if craftsmen make gifts for beastie? Well, so didn't we have the idea ready? Who did? Case tell you read something on. Somebody, I think, said something about that. I was going to say, wasn't it Ryan's questioning of Torian that came up with something like that? Uh, it was both Torian and I want to say it was Asira or one of the half works who had information on it. Okay. They, were, they were talking about the Underlord in particular and how he is interested in things, in collecting things that are new and unique and uh, entertaining to him. Mm -hmm. But I think my questions would, like, I'd ask, I'd be talking to the more educated people here about what they know about Beholders, so that way I'd have an idea, like, I would be able to direct my thought process. And not just be like, this is a neat thing. Well, I seem to remember the mm. Underlord. They had mentioned, uh, don't die in the cave, is what I have. And, um, uh, and they mentioned something about, uh, needing to Pretty prove good, individual worth. So, mm. it, I think it may be something that all of us will end up, uh, Proving ourselves as individuals for our own abilities. So I do recall them saying something along the lines about that. Do with that as you will, Doran, but... Uh, they did mention individual. I don't remember who it was that said it, but somebody did say that. Because I have that put down. That would have been Zasira. Oh, that's right. Zasira said that. I remember things. I'm sure you remember that conversation very well. Of course I do. Nope. Alright. Um, as y'all are starting to go through the rest of these days, you know you're about three days out from White Grand at this point. Miss Lauren, one of the things I would have been doing is working on my little puzzle. Fabulous. And I add. Go ahead and make another... How many weeks have you been doing this? Uh, uh, three weeks or so at this point? Has it only been three weeks? Since oh. the last time you made a check on it. Well, has it been... Let me every care. night, okay. every night we've, I've said that's what I've been doing. So. Yes, I know, but you get to well, make I don't know. For if you're if you're working on it in the evenings, then once a week you get to make a check to see how well uh, the progress has gone overall. Um, Lauren, how far is the travel from uh, where we're at to White Brand? Four weeks. He hasn't made a check since we've been traveling. Say what? He has not made a check since we've been traveling. Okay, so go ahead and go make uh, four checks for me. Actually, make three, and then we'll do the fourth once y'all actually get to White Brand. Ah. That's a 12. That's a 12. Roll better. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, Jay. It's a 10. You understand the business. You, you learned Infernal far better than you are uh, working on that ball. So as you've been... Uh, playing with it. You know that some of the pieces have already clicked together. You've gotten the pattern of it worked out. But there's something about this next connection. One of the pieces you know has to click in somehow, but it's just not connecting yet. So it'll take a little bit more time and a little bit more experimentation to get it to the next step of progress. Fantastic. Uh, if you continue to do it every night from now to White Brand, then once you all get to White Brand, I'll have you go ahead and make another check. Just remind me. Yeah, ask Case and Troll to uh, inspire me a few times. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Anyways. Uh, 
Is there anything else you'll want to do before you get to White Brand? Um, probably the night before we get to White Brand, um, I'll bring everybody up to speed on all my conversations with uh, Rissa. And so if we've gotten that far, I'll go ahead and do that. If we're not gotten that far, I'll wait. Now I think, right now this is the solstice night that Kazator has completed his ritual. Okay. Um, then I'll wait. If, unless there's anything else that y'all want to do in the next two days worth of travel or so, I say we can go ahead and jump to that. I don't want to take a lot of time because I know we're on short session, but I do just want to try to pop out JoJo and just see what is the deal with the whole hot box thing. Love him and pet him. Yeah. Yes. He's, you go ahead and you pop him out, uh, and he comes. Uh, there's a brief transition where he's in the tattoo, and the tattoo almost seems to become a gas that hovers over your body as his body springs forth from that. Like, the ink itself uh, is, is the foundation for the new form that he takes as he's summoned into this physical plane. Um, when so it's, is, not, I can't, it's not subtle. Like, if I'm going to be summoning him from this point on, I can't just pop him in and out. He's going to be... There is a, a very visible transition. The, yes. Okay. Uh, okay. You do notice that when he's in his physical form, uh, your tattoo is gone. Okay. He's not there. Um, there. There... I don't know. What are you wanting to, to discover or explore about him being... bouncing him in and out? I guess... That, first of all, just the transition there, and then I'll just kind of sit and pet, with, pet on him for a little bit, and just, I just want to talk to him and see what his communication is like. Um, so I'll just, you know, apologize that he got, you know, squashed last time, and uh, just see if he remembers anything about the in-between time, or if it was a blink, kind of like Kyra. Um, he was aware of the passage of time okay. and knew that, that things were happening in the outside world. Um, he does seem smarter, uh, um, basically on keel with where your intelligence is. Um, he's, uh, he doesn't speak, uh, physically. But he can speak with you telepathically. Right. Uh, so there's much clearer communication that can happen there. And is that like full sentences with words, or is it more like concepts? Uh, he speaks to you in the same way that you speak to him. Okay. So, so just as it compares, kind of a Kyra level communication telepathically. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Cool. Right, so well. Kyra was very much a baby. He was very young. Jojo is not. Oh, interesting. JoJo's more of a bro. <laughs> Go, bro. Um, what, uh, how big is he? Um, he's a small creature. Okay. So he comes... And he was tiny. Um, so, but... yeah, he's, not, he's not tiny. He is actually a small creature now. Okay. Um, his head comes and rests uh, just above your knee when he's standing. Oh, okay. Cool. Think a right. uh, uh, small to medium-sized dog, a fox yeah. size, essentially. Yeah. Okay. Just with wings. I will. I will shoot you a picture. Actually, I'll send that to you when I send you his stat block. Okay. All right. I'll go ahead and re-tattoo him. All right. Now you know how it felt. For those in the audience who don't know, Kairu is my old character's pet baby dragon. <laughs> she gone cause he did. <laughs> Raise him. <laughs> Alright. Almost caught me on that one, John. So Jay, I'm gonna go ahead and say this is your chance to share anything from Rissa that you had wanted to. Because we're about to hop into one. I have a question actually about this. How yes. much of it have you actually shared? with Rai about, like, where is she at in this conversation? Is she actually a part of it? Which conversation? Any of this stuff about what's going on with y'all's sanctum. 
Uh, I mean, I'm not leaving you out. Yeah, I mean, I don't see why. You're traveling with us. You were part of the group. Okay. They cleared yeah. you in at the beginning, right? No. Nobody told me anything in the beginning. So, that's why I was double-checking. I thought we told you that it got attacked and everything yeah, else. I... No. Oh. No, I don't think y'all have really mentioned anything about your sanctuary either. Uh, Not in game. Well. Um, so on that note. Over these journeys, we informed you what was going on. Okay. We have brought you up to speed. Sanctum was attacked. Partner went missing. Pretty sure we did because we asked if her sanctum had been attacked. I do not recall what you told us, but... We can check the records later. Yeah, we'll go back. Yeah, records later. Yeah. <laughs> Regardless, you are now up to speed of everything that's gone on up until this mm -hmm. point. Because um, otherwise you'd be very confused. Um, so, as our, our last night, right before we get to White Brand, um, I'll bring everybody together and... Lots of information, um, so if you guys don't mind me kind of summarizing a bit, because otherwise we're going to be here for the next two hours, um, but short version is, or Reader's Digest version is, um, I've been talking to Rissa every night, um, they sent a team uh, to go try and rescue Liren. Um it was indeed a trap which we kind of all figured. Um, they avoided the trap. They learned was not there. Uh, they followed the, uh, the people who had laid in wait for the trap uh, back to, I guess, a hideout. Um, and then um, he was dropped in on the conversation um, where they heard that the general... Uh, would be displeased that none of us were caught. Uh, so go team us. Um, they were... Uh, there was mention of uh, the general being a... Um, basically, a, uh, the long and short of it is a spawn of Tiamat. Uh, and Lauren, correct me if I'm, if I'm misinterpreting anything. Um, so, uh, through a very lucky roll, uh, very, very lucky, um, put two and two together, uh, Reuben, Half Dragon, Spawn of Tiamat, General. Well, okay like then. Two and two and two and two and two, I'm coming up with the part, but anyway. Um, Rissa uh, has narrowed down uh, Liren's locations in one of three worlds, um, and they're still going after. Um, they've recovered several of the journals that were on other worlds. Um, so it wasn't just me who lost the journals. Everybody lost the journals. It's almost like they were powerful magical portal opening items or something. Um, did find out that once the journals, and I may have, we may have talked about this already, once the journals are reconnected to the sanctum, they'll start filling themselves back out again rather than continuing to go blank. I'm trying to remember if there's anything else. I feel like there was more, but I didn't have anything to write it down with, and that's all I had in my notes. So... So Val may also remember things imperfectly, and that's fine. Jay's crappy wisdom is not working well with Val's high wisdom. <laughs> we're also discussing the difference between wisdom and intelligence, so. Which is not high, but Jay does not. Um, so yeah, long and short of it is uh, the Brotherhood seems to be a bunch of plane slash world jumpers like us. So they have the anti-symptoms. 
Well, that sounds fun. And at least we've <laughs> turned out, I guess we're not getting away from them. So that's nice. Well, I suppose in your contacts with Rissa and everyone else, have you heard from uh, Tyrek at all? Or uh, yeah, I'm still trying to locate Tyrek. Um, I haven't been able to pinpoint where. The dwarf enchanter. Uh, Luca. Yes. I uh, still have word on Luca either. Um, my last, uh, message that I sent about Owen. Right. Um. I did ask about Owen, and she said. Let me get the 25 word counts exactly, and I will get that to you in just a moment. In the Uh meantime, while she's doing that, um, why, do you have a moment? Yes, darling. Okay. Um, so I have a question for you, and I really hope that you won't take this very personally. <laughs> actually, actually, when I started, darling, absolutely fabulous. Um, yes. Um, but the how to put this delicately? What in the nine hells is going on with you? And for for my, for a little clarification, I we meet you and we think we have met this elf, uh, lovely elf and woman who Thank you, darling. teach us much about making connections uh, with the other members of this world and possibly other worlds. Um, who also has some connections to a uh, another far older sanctum uh, type B, and turns out to be a tiefling in disguise who doesn't really like talking about herself that much. So yes. my question, I guess, would be, what else are you lying about? Can I honestly say that I have not lied to you? Granted, I have not given you total information. Uh, but up until this point, there is nothing else that I've lied about in the questions you've asked. Granted, you have asked very poor questions, I might add, but uh, yeah, I have not lied to you. Asking part. Yes. I'm, I'm not I, sure what answers I can give you then. The, this idea that we're to be tested for the behold of uh, the Underlord. Mm-hmm. Um, has me worried that our, our trust and faith in each other will also be tested. And as we've not known you very long and we've not, we don't know much about you, I'd like to rectify that. All right. So, so that our... And don't get me wrong, I I'm, I'm, have not been with this group much longer than you have. And I'm not any better at making friends than they are. Um, it seems rather friendly, but um, the others can be a bit prickly. All right, less hurtful. <laughs> too friendly. Yeah. But that was like, but, but, never mind. Keep going. <laughs> so dumb jokes. I'm I'm very awkwardly and very poorly extending a hand of friendship here. I'm trying to learn as much as I can about you. I'm not very good at this, so I don't know entirely what questions to ask. Well, I have very little other than there are specificities of the library that I'm not really um, comfortable with revealing. Actually, what you will find typically, which I must say I'm quite amazed at how much you are willing to share with me, uh, good and healthy and best practice typically when it comes to sanctums is to keep the private information of your sanctum private so you never know who's going to be listening now but i do find myself to be completely trustworthy uh you may encounter people who keep off the appearance that they are someone for you to be uh trusting but and this comes in a little bit with why i perhaps am not as 
forthright with you on all topics. Uh, it is good practice to not trust immediately, but to learn if someone is actually worthy of it. And uh, over the past couple of weeks, I have indeed found you to be both of use, but also genuine in your personalities and character for the most part. Uh, so uh, from my end, I have very little issue with continuing to travel with you, but uh, I will say just general thoughts in the future. If you come across someone, just because they say they're from a sanctum, perhaps you don't necessarily want to give them full information. You never know their actual interests. That actually makes more sense. I felt that I'm, I, in my years past, I haven't had much issue with that because, well, I don't have friends that I stay with very long. Uh, I think I've been with this group longer than most of the other groups combined over the past two years. Um, so, I don't know about you, but are there, you're better at asking questions than I am. And we all know if I let Halbert ask questions, so it will end up more of an interrogation. Was, I'm not worried about any questions he has. I was unaware that I was a part of this conversation, but okay. This is around the fire. This was with everybody. I just oh. didn't want Brad to walk away. Oh. I thought this was just y'all talking. Yeah, you, st you started it with, do you have a moment, like, you were, y'all yeah, were walking sure away. Doesn't walk away and leave us. Okay. You know, go to bed. I was writing in my journal. He didn't want to interrupt. Well, I mean, I believe we've gotten uh, most of the information we had hoped to get from Miss Excellence here. I do think that what she says is good practice that we should be perhaps better about and uh, keeping our own business within our own circle. I mean, there is a element of free speech that perhaps should exist within those who we um, are close to with and have been for some time. However, I do think there's wisdom in maybe not sharing our whole life story with anyone and everyone we might happen to encounter. I think that we got lucky with Miss Rai, and um, so it doesn't give us any reason to doubt her. Uh, I, too, had a conversation with her shortly after we left White Grand, and curious about her nature, but from what I have gathered and what I have um, how I feel that she is, is generally honest, if not only totally forthcoming individual, which I can say that I do not say that to be a, uh, a bad thing, though. So, I mean, for me personally, I don't have any further prying questions. Um, so I think that we can trust her to continue with us as long as we are going where we are. Now, granted, when she gets whatever circuit she's looking for, I imagine she'll quickly disappear because, well, we are not the most easy to get along with, and then also she has her own sanctum that she has to go take care of. I can hardly doubt that uh, our own trivial sanctum, or uh, the sproutling, as she calls it, is really worth the time and effort of a older sanctum, such as the library. So, you will find, darling, though, that we are watching. Oh, well, I'm sure. You don't just have some... You don't just have something new come out, and you have to make sure that it is uh, nurtured and raised in the correct manner. I mean, it is said that you can have evil sanctums, and so I would imagine when a new one is formed, such as ours, that the older ones would look onto it and see, well, see which path that it is planning on taking. And there are rest for ruin, darling. Right. If you don't mind, would you uh, possibly find it uh, in your great benevolence to Teach me how to make those kind of connections with people. If you haven't figured it out by now, I'm very bad at this. Darling, it's a, it's a matter of observation. 
you observe a person, you see the assumptions that they make about you, and you lean into them. <laughs> I mean, I'm a very perceptive person. I'm good insight. Um, the, using that to my advantage or to to make those connections is not my forte. Well, it might help to couple your your insight, your ability to read into the motives of people, mm-hmm. and uh, couple that with. A, a smile, a witty comment, and maybe just uh, let them do more of the, the talking and you sort of feel out the direction that they want to go from there. I also think that it helps to uh, just generally uh, be a little welcome and welcoming to anyone who, who comes around you and also don't ask questions that might come across as a uh, hmm, creepy or oddly forward. Val is sitting here like meticulously yeah. writing notes. The other, the other notion I would give you, darling, is uh, to minimize the telepathy around people that you are not familiar with and who are not comfortable. Uh, if you ever do that, whenever you come to, if you come to the library, uh, you will have a crown of madness put on your head because it is considered very rude to do so. There's uh, four situations where it's appropriate for you to actually use telepathy. Uh, if we are in mortal danger and it is inappropriate for you to actually speak your motivations out loud, please use telepathy. Uh, if we're far from each other and you are in mortal danger and you need assistance, please use telepathy. If we're not in mortal danger, but we are close by, but it is still something that should not be said aloud, use telepathy. And in the final situation, whenever none of those are present, you say my name, you look at me, and if I acknowledge you, you use telepathy. If you do not, I will shock you again. Is this Hmm. understood? Oh crap, wait, wrong direction. (laughs) (laughs) It's like reversal. I think she does make a point. It's weirdly invasive when of you do that. Your father was just as bad, if not a little worse. Um, yeah. I admit, this is... This is rather new for me. Um, up until recently, did not have that ability. And, of course, growing up in childhood, that's how everybody spoke. You hear voices in your head long enough, you just forget that that's not how everybody else communicates. Uh, returning back to the original topic of how to engage with people, that is something you should not forget in the future. The experiences you have are not necessarily the experiences of others. Uh, so rather than assuming, you walk into it more openly to see where they are starting at. Val's still like scribbling like mad in his journal. <laughs> But I will say, uh, if you do have other questions, I'm happy to answer them. And if I cannot, I will just tell you this time, rather than avoid them. Of that, I will make an improvement. I, I greatly appreciate that. Oh, and Val, the uh, awkward is whenever you want to have conversations with someone, maybe just actually have the conversation first. It's been a trying last couple of days. Alright, sorry, my audio cut out. Say that one again. It's been a trying last couple of days, so if you have questions, rather than just awkward glances, actually ask them. Stop looking weirdly at people and just come out and say what you want to say. Yes. The whole side-eye thing is not doing anybody any favors. No, and it can be quite easily misunderstood by the wrong person. The best way to deal with any confrontation or questions is just out and out open communication. Yes, this is very true. This has been very educational. Anything else I can help you with, Ali? Well, you've given me a lot 
to think about, and probably more than I realized I needed to think about. You're gonna go get ready for bed. Walk off. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So it's. Yes. I'm curious, based off the information that we just had from Val before his timely conversation about conversations, um, would there be a way to contact the Order of Bahamut and inform them about the Brotherhood and their connection with Tiamat as a whole? Because right now you as the Arbiter, of course, but it might be best to have the entire host of your temple behind us or at least aware of the potential threat. Yes, uh, the most convenient way to do that would be have Val contact Sarai. Uh, I do not possess any such powers, but uh, seeing as how he has met her, and then uh, seeing as he has met her, and that she has the capability of reaching out to whoever else may need, uh, that she does know. She does know the hierarchy of the church here, so... Um, I do believe that that is a good call, and I was going to approach, approach the subject with Val uh, in the morning, once he has regained his ability to use that spell. Very good. Well, seeing as it is your your temple and your people, I will yield to you. Oh, I do, I do appreciate you looking out and thinking about uh, the Church of Bahamut and what it can do, and there's a part of it that is very thoughtful of you, however. As long as Tiamat gets killed, or her followers get killed, I don't really care who does the killing. Her followers, quite possibly, but as far as I know, you can't kill a god. And last I checked, Tiamat was a god. I know of one who died, but he did come back three days later. Happy Easter, everybody! (laughs) Speaking of sending, Val, in response to the last message you had sent Rissa about Owen, she responds, We haven't seen Owen. The sanctum has diminished, and that's not a good sign, but neither have we found his body. I'll relay that to the rest of the group when that happened. Oh, and his team at. <laughs> Val, have they been in the Sanctum since it was the room? We, uh, we to open the return there. So the Sanctum is not being governed by horrid things from the house at this point? As of this point, no. Okay, well, that's good to know. Good to know we can return there if that ever becomes a thing and we won't immediately be killed by those who took it off in the first place. Oh, I would also check in with Audir and see how the cleaning of the keep was going. Alright. <laughs> I forgot about that until just now. Are you prepared to use all of yours to have this conversation? All of your spell slots? I, well, that's why I wait till evening to have the to to do all the sendings, just in case I need the spell slots for you know a rock that happens to fly overhead or something. R O C, not R O C K, guys. <laughs> if you are familiar with D and D lore? Big bird. Big big bird. Ah! And yellow. A good deep fried in 11 herbs and spices. <laughs> we know Suya's so like those rock legs. <laughs> they were quite good. Trying to get the word count <laughs> for Audier's message. Ow.
Tasty. Okay. Uh, you send your message and she responds. Well, it's quite a mess. Did you know there are spiders that can jump to another plane and back? They're quite <laughs> Guys. We know where they're at. They were in the basement. So sad. I feel like Warren is the one who's actually sad because he's doing the teeth to face by the thing. Probably. Yeah. Well, what kind of cool stuff is down there that our dears gets now? I know. There's a, well, there's a bunch of spiders. We do know that. Yeah. Well, nothing else. She's getting some good battle experience. Mm hmm. When you come back and our beer's gonna be like level 17, like, what the heck? What was down there? You don't wanna know. <laughs> you see, you see Laura <laughs> Kane, uh, give I've Haley a bunch of cards. I've seen so many things. Alright, let's do it. Anything else you want to do, or shall we go ahead and jump to Wet Friends? <laughs> no, it is. Alright. I'll mention to Val about contacting Sir Ryan, letting the church know of what we figured out, so. Um, and didn't you just tell me not to contact people telepathically? Didn't we just have this conversation? There's a difference between like, telepathically like and sending, and sending is a message, is a spell, and also this is a time of distress. You're not just openly talking when you could be talking to her face to face. It's a time you of distress to and an important message that needs to be said. Alright, I guess that's fair. Although I don't, I'm not entirely sure she'll be happy to hear from me. Oh, she so, probably won't, but the information you will be sharing might smooth some of those on wonders. Before we just send, uh, allow me just to recap, if if I may. Um, we are sure that the Brotherhood is associated with Tiamat, and it's not that Tiamat just infiltrated the Brotherhood. I think it's important that she should inform that Reuven... A being that she has encountered is quite possibly a spawn of Tiamat. Mm -hmm. I think that's the important connection that needs to be made. Never read those comics. So uh, we feel like that that is the important information that should be relayed is that uh, uh, the connection between Ruvin and Tiamat, not so much the Brotherhood in itself. They can do further research into Reuven and his contacts within the Brotherhood. Very good. You know, Reuven was a general, is that correct? He seems Something to be like very that. Uh, yes. directly under Crenshaw. Right, he's somebody important. So. And if he is a spawn of Tiamat and not the most powerful member of the Brotherhood, I would imagine that the Tiamat's influence goes to the top. I would imagine... But assuming that things are not often as they seem. Assuming that, of course, it is the Brotherhood as a whole that is the issue, and not just Reuven himself. He could that be. Is, it didn't seem Reuven like could be leading a people. sect of Brotherhood people under the guise of the Brotherhood for Tiamat's purposes. When in doubt, or when in truth, it's, the Brotherhood itself is not bad, but Reuven and his small sect of Brotherhood members is. Have you ever? encountered this uh, group on this particular world. Oh, yes. This is the only world, and no one we have met on this entire world has been fond of them. They were, they dealt with some shady business. Um, they attempted to kidnap a boy that we um, interfered with. Hit a he blind the, child. He was, he was the brother of the a Oracle of Bahamut, who had attempted to make a deal with them out of desperation. We, uh, and then came to collect the boy. We stopped them, and that's where we met Reuven. And they approached us under a spell that disguised all of their appearances. But when in truth, they were all chromatic dragonborn. Except so, for except for Reuven, who uh, had white wings. So we believe him to be He's of a, a dragon spawn, some not not so much of a dragon born itself. Uh, but no. they were they were all chromatic in color, and uh, 
So we have had at least some encounters with them. I'm not entirely sure with the uh, necessity to indicate the fact that they're all chromatic has to do with anything. Uh, well, but... I think they put around, but they don't really, there aren't many chromatic. Tiamat is the god of the chromatic. She is. She is a god that the chromatic dragons can worship, not that they all okay. do. But they are directly linked, and these group of traumatic, of chromatic, traumatic dragons, chromatic dragons, uh, were obviously led by one who was directly connected with her. So, just our assumption that these, in particular, were. We're not saying all chromatics are connected to him, of course, but it is safe to assume that it those who are led by Ruven, but we also know that the banner of the Brotherhood, were not of good-hearted nature. We also do know that they were followers of Tiamat based off of um, a dialogue that Selix and myself had with one of them. This is true. The dialogue is the uh, import, not necessarily whether they're chromatic or not. Sorry, I have forgotten entirely about that dialogue. Or at least I had. Sorry, I remembered. It's been a few months. I only make the notion because my mentor was himself a uh, green chromatic dragon who actually did worship Bahamut. So, be careful of the assumptions you make. Did or did not? What did, did you just say? Bahamut. Okay. Of course, yes. so like we said, did dragon not... or dragonborn? Dragonborn. Just because they are a dragon. If my mentor was a freaking dragon, that would have been amazing. <laughs> I don't think she would have had to get away with that. She would have had fire. Right. right. Had the ball as teacher. Chromatic is not automatically mean evil or aligned to Tiamat, but those who encountered were. Just to know. Of course. Although we are fairly certain that Rylock is. Yeah. <laughs> Alright then. So you'll take your evening's rest, and the next day, late in the afternoon, you start approaching White Ram. Uh, you come around a curve in the road, and you see it stretching before you, the valley um, containing the city. And it is only just containing the city. You see the bits of blue of water of the oasis peeking through a variety of buildings that are built low to the ground, painted in shades of white and green. You see green uh, surrounding the, the central water locations. And you see the sides of the valleys have been, been cut down, uh, creating a fortification almost where houses and buildings and shops and other um, other businesses have been built into the walls of the valley, um, surrounded by a wall manned by guards and a gate that uh, straddles the only clear road into and out of the city. It's currently open for traffic. There are a few people coming in and out. There's some activity at this, even in this late hour of the afternoon. What do you do? Figured we'll go ahead and go into our ground. Mm -hmm. At least find lodging for the night. All right. Enough tiny hut. Need real sleepy time bed. <laughs> you approach the gate, and the guards pause you for a moment. Excuse me, what is your business in the city? Oh, we've got a delivery, darling. Uh, we're coming in from Grimhold, and I have been sent on a delivery for uh, a golden cob, yes. Ah, yes. You will want them in the artist alley, then. Perfect. Thank you, darling. Are we at a cob? Have lodging arranged for you? Uh, I had not thought ahead to that. That is very kind of you to inquire about. The beggar's banquet here at New Point, close to the gate, and he gestures down the road a little bit. Take a right. The lodging will be prepared. Thank you for your delivery. And he gestures for you some motion through. Thank you. Very interesting. Pleasant fellow. He reminded and that was me of you, the, right? The beggar's banquet that he just told us where we will be staying? Yep. Um, 
What type of do they seem like heavily armed? Just standard town or do they seem militant or like police force in their in their garb? Um, they seem fairly typical guardsmen. It surprises you a little bit, Silex, because you're used to seeing people of a certain militant nature uh, associated with the Temple of Bahamut. Um, these people are not. You saw no sign of Bahamut or following him um, on their person. Um, as we're walking and observing the people in the town, do they look like your normal townsfolk, or do they have sort of the spirit of a oppressed group? Make an insight check. Uh, she has already rolled her dice. Fourteen. Fourteen. Um, most of them seem to be going about their day-to-day lives. The heat is oppressive this late in the afternoon. Um, the area where you're at is situated so close to the desert to the north. Uh, definitely, definitely shows. And so there seems to be a certain uh, reluctance to be out, but you feel like it has more to do with the heat of the day than any other uh, major factor. Hey, y'all, sorry. Mic check real fast. Am I coming in? Because my stuff just died. Yep. 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 You're good. There you go. Well, I know. As we're, as we're kind of walking through the city, I'd like to keep an eye out for um, any symbols of um, the Brotherhood, uh, the symbols of the Brotherhood, the Traveler, and the Edge. Okay. Um, make a perception check. As y'all are headed, being directed towards the Beggar's Banquet, which is not terribly far into the city. Yeah, we will go there and we'll secure our is- lodging. Okay. It's a very large city, correct? Uh, fairly, yes. Okay. But this isn't where you're from, so yes. No, I'm from Dragonthorn, which is the capital to the south. And that um, is- in comparison to Grimhold, about the same size, smaller, bigger? Um, slightly smaller. Okay. Grimhold had its city walls and was very expansive. Uh... White Brand seems to be limited by the size of the valley. Okay. Well, the uh, natural 17 plus 8. 25. Impressive. Um, as y'all are going through the the short streets, um, heading towards um, White Brand, you are seeing that these are all houses that are built fairly low to the ground, um, mostly out of some mud brick mixture um, almost dug out of the valley itself and dried over time to create these domiciles. Um, As you're going through, you don't see anything in particular pertaining to the edge. Um, You get that sense of operating so close to the entrance of the city, it may not necessarily be something that they would do. Um, You do find a notice board that catches your eye a little bit because it talks about the um, the brotherhood and the service of the mother and how um, come to us all you who need aid and the mother shall guard you in a warm embrace and um, listen the address. Uh, is that uh, attached to the board? It is. I'm gonna go quickly jump on, snatch it from the board, and uh, go bring it over to the group to look, pass around and look at. Okay. Uh, at the bottom, it does list an address uh, somewhere in the city. You're not really familiar enough with the city, the place where it might be. I don't know about you, Phil, but this seems to just confirm my suspicions that that may be involved, yeah. Oh, yes. 
we would stop with confirming our suspicions. It might be of interest to find out if they're aware of Reuben as well. Is he out of the city, or is he... Is there another here that you would concern yourself with? Was Reuben from White Brand, or was he based out of their headquarters? Uh, it, was, it wasn't said. I do believe Reuben was from their headquarters, which was called... I feel like you're a teacher watching her students just search them drastically through their notes trying to open what's the test. No test. If y'all remember, that's awesome. If you don't, that's okay too. They refer to it as a compound. Were you thinking it had a specific name? I thought I had written down a name for it somewhere. I have like four different things in my notes before I got this thing, so. I may, it may be in one of my notepads that I have misplaced. Maybe during our downtime, we should all transfer our notes to one book. Well, there's the one we started with campaign with, which is just straight gone. I don't know where that one went. Yeah, I, I understand. So, uh, if I did write it down, I don't have it anymore. Fair enough. I, 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 I seem to remember the compound as well. I don't yeah, no. I do have... It written down that the compound is closer than you think. So that was that was uh, when I asked about uh, are you are you nearby? I don't know that that was in direct relation they to the compound that, itself. Didn't they mention that there was more than one? Because the one that we saw from a distance was between Stillwater and Longview. Yes, that, that was the that was like the main one. That was their headquarters. Again, do we know that, or are we making a yes? Assumption? No, uh, somebody somebody told us that that was their headquarters. Okay. We did not insight check them. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry, we Lauren. Sure, we were talking. <laughs> I know, right? And this notice that we're looking at from the board has the same five pointed star emblem on it of the Brotherhood. It does. Well, okay. Time out. Um, we do know that the the boy sent off to Reuben. For, um, uh, he didn't show up immediately. He had to take a few days journey to get there, so we know it was not immediately nearby. It was Correct. not, from what I recall, it definitely was not White Brand because it was not such a long journey. I think it was like a, um, um, a few days spread, but it was not five. Now, I don't have the notes on it, so I can't say specifically um i have a dot on my map but i don't know if i'm willing to uh put money on that just yet so but i don't think white brand was his home base uh, uh, and if what i have what little bit i do have and what i recall is it was from the east but it was not far like it was not as far as we have traveled Okay. Side note question. Is this five-pointed star a single color, or is it multicolored? Um, in On the notice that you're holding, it's just black ink. It's black ink. Okay. We do know that they have different colors to correspond to rank and insignia that are metallic colors. Well, they also... Tiamat being a five-headed dragon, and there are five colors of chromatic, which I'm assuming is where the symbol comes from. I would imagine. So I didn't yes. know how obvious it was. and Well, what's intriguing about it is they're using metallic colors to um, signify rank. You can almost do that as a mockery if you wanted to. Well, one of them was made out of wood, though. Yes, that was... What was it? Um, what, what was its face? Was it Torian's made out of wood? Torian's was. Yeah. And was he a true follower? Oh, I don't think so. So. You never did ask. Once again, an assumption. You know what? He is a follower of the traveler. So I'm guessing he probably follows Tiamat as well. That makes <laughs> sense in my mind. I feel like that's definitely making a leap. 
Well, those who are clever and have interest may actually attempt to meet each other. Check the one. Um, all right, well, let's say that we were, while well, thinking about all this and talking about it, we were headed towards the beggar's uh, banquet. banquet. Thank you. All right. You go ahead, and it's it's not hard to find. It is the a very large building. Um, it's still all single story, but it's one of the largest buildings that we've come across so far in White Ram. And the... The building itself is whitewashed. It's low to the ground with very small sort of vented windows towards the top. And you enter, and it is, at first, it feels very dark in there. Um, it is it is low lit. You know, it's, hmm? Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, there is dim lighting in there. It, it's not very... It's, it's sparsely populated. There's not a whole lot of activity. Um, it's a large room that it opens into, very similar to a tavern area. A few tables, some booths lined the wall, and there's a bar set up at one side with the barkeep uh, currently wiping it down. It looks like he's organizing and preparing for what might be a rush later tonight. There's a hallway that goes farther back into the building, and there are stairs that descend down. Um, did you say the, the race and description of the... I don't. There, it's just a, I just said a barkeep. Yes. The barkeeper, as you look uh, closer at him, is a human man, uh, balding, uh, dark hair, dark skin, uh, wearing lighter uh, robes, um, belted around the waist with a finely worked leather belt. Does it look like he might have anything like an earring or a, uh, like a, a hairpin or something like that? <laughs> uh, you see any uh, ear adornments or anything in his hair. You do see a leather cord around his neck that is tucked inside of his shirt. Well, I'll go up to him and say, uh, hello there. Um, this is the, the beggar's banquet, correct? Indeed it is, sir. Welcome, and what may I do for you today? Wonderful. Well, my name is Soliax, and we are uh, fairly new to town and have been directed that uh, there is lodging to be had here. By all means, yes. How long do you wish to stay? Oh, I imagine a day or so. Uh, can we take it by a night-by-night -night basis? That's Certainly, you can. I only ask because if you purchase a week at a time, there is a slight discount we can offer. Oh, I don't think we'll be here quite that long. Uh, as you insist. Assumption. <laughs> we do have well, other things we should take care of quickly. Can I insight check that? Are we going to be here longer than that? Insight check, Wesley. I must say, I did, uh, I did not catch your name, sir. Uh, my name is. Hold on, let me put this on the right screen. Uh, my name is Soren. 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 No. Oh, you're gonna get that second time. Right <laughs> it's right right of, uh, Soren. I, I do believe one. One night to start with. Um, as you can see, we recently got to town, and we at least need. A day to figure out where we are and what exactly is the plan going forth. Um, how many rooms do you think we could acquire? How many rooms do you need? We have a number of vacancies. Uh, could we possibly go with two, uh, three, four rooms? Let's go with four rooms. Four or, actually, I'm going to turn around and look at the group. How do we want to? Uh, rooming wise, or oh, uh, case at all. All right, uh, um, Dorian, do you then you Val, can. you can come join us if you want. Why not? Okay, then three, we'll do uh, three rooms and let Miss I have her privacy. It is five silver pieces 
her room. Okay, then. I will hand him uh, two gold and say, oh, is there also perhaps a place where we could get some food and drink here? By all means. Dinner wonderful. is in the process of being made. That's yeah. wonderful. Well, thank you. We will go get ourselves set up and then be back down shortly. You are quite welcome. Uh, let me get a boy to lead you to your rooms. And he claps his hands. And a, a preteen boy who looks fairly similar to the man. Uh, my son, Varlin, will lead you to your rooms. Boy. Varlin? Varlin. Okay, I, I totally heard Varlin. I was like, wait, what? I heard Garland. Uh, Voland. Uh, what was the name of this place? The Beggar's what? Beggar's. Beggar's. Um, you see a boy in a white tunic, uh, dark leggings, a cheap leather belt around his waist, also wearing a um, leather cord around his neck, tucked under his shirt. Age? Uh, 10, 12, something of that age I'm guessing whatever they're wearing, you can't quite tell. It's not making an indention or an impression on the shirt that they're wearing. There is a slight uh, disturbance of the shirt. So yeah, it just looks star-like. Make a perception check. Oh, jeez. Oh, uh, 18. 24. Uh, no, it does not seem to resemble a star. Does it seem to resemble an arch? <laughs> uh, I'm ready next. Those of y'all who are investigating this. Hmm? I, I couldn't hear what you said. Jonathan said he's readying in action. <laughs> readying in action is a combat move, not technically something you do out of combat. But we save that for initiative. Um, a relief sculpture of a butt. The, those of y'all who are investigating, it, it resembles, actually it's hard to tell this moment, it's, it's a slight, uh, it protrudes slightly, you can see where the shirt or the robe rubs against it a little bit. Um, as he walks, those of y'all who have passive perception of 18 or better, who is that? All right, Halberd, his door. Val, what's yours? 19. Okay, so the three of y'all, uh, where are y'all standing? How closely are you following as he leads you? The sun? Oh, yes. I'm, I'm close to him. Okay. Um, he's leading you down the stairs uh, into what looks to be a basement level of the building uh, with rooms that have been dug out. And it is significantly cooler as you descend the steps. Um, the light stays very dim. At this point, I do want uh, Val to go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I forgot about that part. Halberd, <laughs> as you're staying very close to him, you do feel or you do hear a very slight clinking, uh, almost of coins, as he moves. Um. Uh, Ten. Ten. Uh, Val, you get to the top of the stairs and you freeze. Where were you in the marching order? I don't know. <laughs> At the back. At the back, everybody's like ruining me. <laughs> you just if, I'm a, if I'm anywhere near him, I'll probably loop an arm through his and just start chattering and walking down the stairs to try and distract him. Guy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, that's how it works. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Val, in your in your darkness, you hear a voice, uh, not super familiar to you, but one that you are slowly becoming more familiar with. You hear Rai, and it's hard to make out the words that she's actually saying. Uh, do you resist as she attempts to lead you deeper into the darkness? <laughs> um, I 
probably not. Um, you're not happy about it, but I don't know. <laughs> uh, right. As you lead him into the darkness down the steps, uh, you start to feel a fine tremor under your hand where your arm is looped with his. He's not resisting you, but you can tell there's definitely some anxiety that this scenario has somehow brought up. I don't know who's in front of me, but I will casually call out to them in the middle of it. Just to kind of get their attention. I would imagine I was semi-close. Okay. Just see Soliax, like, reach out his tail and start tracking him. Um, and so it's Val who's tremoring a little bit? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Val, go ahead and make me another wisdom saving throw. Uh, so that's a nine. <laughs> um, you are starting to, uh, experience a flashback. Being led deeper into the darkness, feeling this hand, this weight on your arm, it is bringing back some unpleasant memories. It's it's pretty dark down here, right? It is. It is very dimly lit. Okay, uh, I'm going to. I won't. Neither do I. So that's why I'm going to cast the light. You gotta put it light. Um, I'm gonna illuminate, not like the full brightness. I want to like dim it a little bit, so it's not like dark. So I'm like, ah, oh, it hurts. So I will. Uh, put a little light in here, and I'll go up to Val and say, Well, Val, because traveling down into the dark isn't always super fun. Uh, uh, how are you doing? Um, you hear his words coming to you as through a great distance. Uh, echoey, almost. It's hard to, to really string the words together, Val. I understand what it's like to uh, have your own issues, and I'll reach a hand out, and I will cast Heroism on Val. Making him... What? I'll cast Heroism on you, which means... Oh, okay. Uh, a, you get some temporary hit points, but also you can't be frightened. Oh, that's slick. Yeah. Yeah, so no. the creature is immune to being frightened and gains temporary hit points. So nice. you gain four temporary hit points, but you're also you're immune to being frightened for at least a minute. So nice. see if that'll snap you out of it. As you feel Soliax's hand on you, and a warmth starts to spread through your body, this familiarity, this realization that your your friends are here. Um, go ahead and make uh, one more wisdom saving throw, and go ahead and make this one at advantage. Oh, that was so good. That's an advantage. Ooh, that would have been bad. Um, that is 24. All right. Uh, you go ahead. Your sight begins to clear. This tunnel vision that had overcome you starts to fade. Uh, you start realizing, feeling more in control of your own body, feeling the rapidness of your heartbeat and the tremor uh, as your hands were starting to shake. They start to subside. You look ahead yeah, see. and see Harlan uh, gesturing into the rooms for you. Of course. Now let's get some of this light going and get into a, a nice room where we can settle down after a very extensive journey to get here. Um, so once everyone's in the room, I'll be one of the last ones to go in. I'll just put my hand on his shoulder and as he's kind of walking saying, hey, thank you, son, and make a motion to try to uh, catch the back of the necklace and accidentally brush it up to where I could see what it is. Make and then I'm going to pull to... out, as I do that, a silver... Cool. Oh Modified 20. Modified 20? Yeah, it's not hard. Uh, without him even noticing, actually, 
you go ahead and you you slip a finger just under the edge of the leather cord and pull it up. You see that it is a small leather pouch. Uh, there are what looks to be a few small items inside, uh, rounded edges, uh, and they clink gently against each other as it moves. Um, I'm going to... Sorry. Roll for marking. <laughs> Halbert, the mother of 12-year-olds. Put a silver in his hand and say, thank you, son, and go in some room. All right. Uh, as you leave, he hands you the keys. It's for you to divide amongst yourselves as you will. And he, he takes the, the silver and let's see how well he does with this. Impressive. What's your passive perception? Nineteen. Okay. He rolled an eighteen, so you just see him slip it into that pouch that he'd been carrying around his neck. <laughs> Sweet. Dude, if you rob a twelve year old, you are a terrible person. I didn't rob anyone Yet. of anything. I have found that information. <laughs> And see, I do it politely versus just going up to someone saying, I hate your face, will you tell me about you, please? Um, <laughs> I think he said, I like your face, will you tell me? I think he said, I like your daughter's face, will you tell me? <laughs> no, I was talking no. about conversation with her. Right. Right. He technically said, I like your disguised face. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not hitting on a 12-year-old or somebody's daughter or anything else. I'm finding out information. Like, are these people brotherhood? That's I mean, not. Technically, he was hitting on her father, but... He was hitting on her vicariously through her father, which was yeah. all sorts of weird. Yes. So, we'll, we'll, he and I will have to have a talk about stuff. Okay. <laughs> uh, I imagine, Albert, you give us all the keys? No. No, I don't know. Albert, oh, you have to grab the keys. What case? Yeah, of course. Here you go. Alright, so uh, let's... We need to figure out. The room is expansive and comfortable. There are multiple cushions low to the floor and a, a mattress that is on a low stand. It's only raised off the floor about six inches or so. Um, and the walls themselves... On each of the walls, there are two luminescent crystals that glow, emitting a soft, warm light uh, without producing any actual heat. Upon entering the room, I want to do a uh, detect magic to see if there's any divination type people listening in. Um, you do not see any uh, divination spell orbs or anything like that. Um, you do see that the crystals themselves do contain magic, uh, in the school of invocation. Okay. Cool. Well then, um, I would suggest then that perhaps we, before meeting in a common place, we should, the, all of us meet up and figure out exactly what it is we need to accomplish in this city, and then so we can quickly move on. We, um... To have things we must accomplish, and now that we are closer to the Underlord, we should uh, not tarry too long on our journey to him. We need to, I imagine, find whatever information we can about him and beholders themselves. Uh, Beholder. A whole, there may be a, a library or something here that, in case it were, you could... Do your studying, much like you did on snakes, only this time on something perhaps a little bit more deadly. Um, figure out what we can about him. Um, but I do think we do not want to stay in this town for very long. Thoughts? Um, yeah, I'd be interested just to find out what information we could and then be on our way, I feel like. Time is of the essence, and right now we're looking for the third book of four, and we have no idea where the fourth one is. Right. Uh, so what if we, what would you all say to doing a uh, 
an information gathering campaign. Those who are more astute perhaps could find some sort of library or something along that nature. And those of, well, the rest of us could um, walk the streets, hang out some taverns, and ask certain questions about uh, what we might be able to find. Given now that we are in a closer location, they might have more information on the Underlord himself. Because we're like so, a couple days out from him, right, Lauren? Yeah, you're about three days from Boulder Peak. Yeah. Yes, we right. might also uh, capitalize on the fact that we do have a delivery to the Golden Cog, and I can be quite charming in my interactions. But, of course. So uh, it is possible we can find out information not just about the Golden Cog, but if potentially they know anything about uh, our uh, last stop as well. Yes, sir. Uh, I do believe that that is also part of um, the information gathering and rising how you can fit into both circles of a studious study and a uh, charming personality. I figured uh, the first stop perhaps would be to make our delivery, seeing as how that is why we are in town, and then we can go from there. I'd also be curious just to look at this address. I'm going to grab the piece of paper with the address of the Brotherhood, just to um, to watch. You are thinking of doing a short scouting mission, then? Potentially. Seeing what it is? I don't know. I don't know. I myself, a bad idea. Apparently not good at stealth. I myself will uh, stay clear of that location, given my accoutrement that I carry. Kind of makes me stand out, and if they are associated to Tiamat, my close proximity may not bode well for any of the other members of our party trying to find information. Um, if you're going to make that journey, I'll reach into my pouch and pull out one of the Brotherhood necklaces that took off the dead body. Don't know if this will come in handy, but it might, and I'll toss it to Albert. I'll grab it. What, what metal was it? Uh, that one, I think, was one of the wood ones, if I remember correctly. Mm. You got you got it from the fight for uh, from the it was one of the, the temple fight. Yeah, uh, it was one of the archers, wasn't it? They didn't have wood ones. Yeah, no, uh, they that. didn't have any wood ones there. They yeah. all wore yeah. metal ones. It was. I remember which one it was. Rubens was platinum. Platinum. It was a uh, platinum, a... Well, the only platinum one was... Right, Ruben's, Ruben's was platinum. And then... Oh, his was, it was a copper limit, like, or a copper or brass, something of that nature. Yeah, yeah, but then there wasn't, wasn't there, like, a, a darker one? I don't have it written down. I thought there was a... There was a silver one, there was a brass one. That's all I've got written down. So let's say that, you know, it's probably a brass one, because there's more brass ones, I remember. So you probably handed him a brass one then. Uh, I might suggest, rather than just uh, trying to use the charm as a bit of a disguise, maybe actually using a disguise self, since you do not know if perhaps they have been alerted to both your presence and your visages. I don't believe Halbert has that capability. I, that is a point. Well, I don't think Halbert is planning on infiltrating as much as just keeping an eye. Right, Halbert? Yeah, no, I thought he was approaching someone, that's why he wanted to be in it. No, I, I gave him a pendant just in case. Yeah. Gotcha. It was, a, it was a. It, it, things go poorly. A last ditch effort, not the first attempt. Yeah. Just for reference, in case we need people to do that kind of thing, who know who has this guy's self? Not me. Nope. Just I have me. my pendant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, my pendant. All right. Oh, most of, <laughs> given the fact that myself and our cleric friend have both uh, divination by nature, we're not. Uh, <laughs> we are not naturally prone to. Uh, Disguising and deceptions. That's not the basis of our magics. Well, um, please forgive me. I was looking through a note because I had some info on the Brotherhood 
that I just saw. Um, so please forgive me on that. But what what did Rice say about disguising? Just ask if we could. Yeah, who could? And then you're not planning on actually approaching them, just watching them, right? I want to see if there's, I'll walk by, um, see if there's a tavern or something like that, just to watch, see the people who come and go. I'll hold on to this little trinket, um, just in case. Was it, I think it was, was it copper, Lauren, or was it brass? Um, I will look that up in my notes and get that back to you this week. Okay. I'll hold on to this just to have. What if we were to say, um, we need to, essentially, we need to go to the Golden Cog and make a delivery. We should mm-hmm. find some sort of library and then also uh, do some tavern scouting. Well, I'll tell you what. How about this, if you're not opposed to it, Miss Rye? Excellent. Um, we can go drop off this item to the Golden Cog. I'd kind of like to see that one through, just because... Um, yeah, I was kind of there with all that. Um, yes, quick memory styling. Yeah, I, I had them occasionally. They don't come often, but once in a while. But seeing as you are actually nicer to people than I am, because I don't really care too much, um, it might be best if you were willing to go with me um, just to scout out, maybe sit and watch the Brotherhood. That way, if I do happen to get myself into trouble, maybe you can talk my way out of it. I am going to pay for dinner again. You're playing this time, but yes. All right. Well, if you two want to go off for your own mission there, um, perhaps Kesator and Val, if you two want to go find books and such, uh, Dorian and myself will go see what we can find in uh, the local taverns around. See if we can't find anything out about this Underlord. Miss Rye, I yes. uh, have a bit of experience around libraries and such, but being that you are from a sanctum called the library, is there any connections or insight you might give me as I seek information? Um, well, this is where there might be uh, more questions that you would want to pose in regards to this. So we have very different types of librarians. Uh, I am not a research librarian. I simply go out and acquire things in particular. So that type of work and information, well, I would be more than happy to assist with. I'm not necessarily the best one to provide direction on it. Fair enough. Just don't crease the books and you should be fine. <laughs> Never did. Right. So, uh, well, Doran, how do you feel about this plan that we have concocted? I mean, it's Better than many plans we've come up with so far. <laughs> uh, Lauren, what time of day is it right now? Uh, it is e- afternoon, getting towards the evening. Um, the sun's going down and the temperature is starting to drop. Uh, you've got probably about another hour of sort of daylight left before it gets fully into night. Well, do we want to do some uh, scouting out this evening? see what we can come up with, and then depending on the information we get, perhaps tomorrow we act on it and leave, or perhaps we stay in the day and try to seek out further sources. Does that, that sound agreeable? I am amenable to this. Right, well, then I suppose we should uh, get to it then, seeing as we don't have a whole lot of uh, daylight left to use. Um, granted, Dorn and my expedition won't take very long during the day. Um, we will try to end up back here, so if you guys complete your assignments, I would say just come back here and we'll all meet back here before too long. Fair enough to me. Mm-hmm. Right then. I suppose we should get to it. Synchronize your watches. Who wants to go first? Uh, Sure, why not? 
You want to take care of your golden cog? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Why not? Oh, Unless you don't want right. to. Is there something you find disagreeable in this? Me, no. Spending time with Halberd. Oh, she's very entertained spending time with Halberd. Why would you disagree with that? Hey, I'm actually like not absolutely hated by somebody. That's pretty nice. I need to work harder at this, though. Sorry. <laughs> Playing my character wrong, darn it. <laughs> All right. As y'all are heading out into the streets trying to find the golden cog, um, make an investigation check for me. Oh, yes. I was also going to oh, ask um, the barkeep maybe if he might know okay. where we should go. Now that is a good idea. Um, yeah. So you, and you head back up to... I mean, getting directions is always good, right? It helps. I'm sometimes not opposed to that. There, everything inside of me as a man is saying don't do it. But if I'm going to play a stereotype, just uh, do that. So yeah. you yeah. need to talk to Soren. And you can see that there's already a couple other people in there. Um, two of them are emerging from the hallway. Uh, the rooms towards the back of the building, you assume. Um, and he waves you over and, uh, what can I, what can I do for you? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, if you don't, if you don't mind, me and my friend have got to make a, an errand uh, to a place. I believe, what is it called? Is it the Golden, the Golden Cog? Yes, that's what it is, the Golden Cog. Um, uh, do you have any idea? Yeah. Uh, Certainly, the Golden Cog is well known here. Uh, where we're situated here in New Point, you'll want to head north into Artis Alley. Uh, you'll want the eastern side of the. Hold on. Let me make sure I'm giving you the right directions. Okay. You'll want to the eastern side of the southern oasis here. Uh, if you've gone, the, you hit the big lake. You've gone too far. Um, right at the northern tip, on the eastern side, you'll find the golden cog. Should be a 30 minute walk this time of night. Very good. I, I greatly appreciate it, good sir. Um. He gives you a few suggestions in how to get through the streets of Naypoint Point up to Artis Alley, uh, the Martian District, essentially. Um, go ahead and make a... Halberd, make a survival check for me to see how long you can follow the directives. That's going to be a... Uh, what was it? Survival? Survival. <laughs> Twelve. I hate Twelve. that stupid number. It's right above eleven. But it's not really that great. <laughs> so you asked for directions, but you weren't paying attention. I don't know. The DM hasn't told me yet. The DC for this was exactly twelve. Uh, <laughs> trying to go out without directions, it would have been a, a bit higher. Trying to find your way through the streets, um, asking random people or shopkeeps to give you directions, but. Though you get yourself a little turned around a time or two, you do manage to get yourself back on track uh, to the Golden Cog. It only takes you 35, maybe 40 minutes. Um, so it's getting into the evening. It's almost sundown. And the torches are lit. You are... Uh, lit. <laughs> essentially, yes, because it is this massive building, this... Very, very finely decorated shop front, you know, um, proclaiming their their wealth uh, for anyone who passes to see. Um, it is not widely, uh, there, there aren't a lot of people inside. Um, you, the lavish decorations, the... Um, the servant at the door holding a fan, uh, Paul Lee, is beckoning you to come in. Uh, please, uh, do come in, good sir, m'lady. Um, so, by comparison, I'm just curious. 
one, how is Ra dressed? How is everyone else in this place dressed? And do I look totally out of place? Uh, you are fairly out of place in in your your armor. But there's not. You saw armor on the guardsmen. Now there have been a couple of patrols that you passed just uh, going through doing their their route. Um, they they most of the people here are dressed in layers of cloth, uh, fabric of some kind that seems to breathe better in heat and be a little bit more comfortable there. Uh, but you you come to the golden cog. The torches are out, you're welcomed in, and it is a lavishly decorated two-story building. Um, the, the person who is welcoming us, I will stop and be like, uh, we were informed to speak with uh, someone named Amaral. Amaral, could you possibly point them out to us, please? Oh, uh, my lady Amaral, of course, of course. Um, and as they as they bow forward, uh, Halbert, you notice again that they have a, a leather cord with a pouch hanging around their neck. Um, they gesture inside, and there is a lovely, golden-skinned, dark-haired lady. Um, jewelry of, of finely wrought silver and copper uh, decorating her, her hands as rings and armbands and a couple of necklaces. Um, she, she takes in the sort of road-weary look that the two of you are both sporting, um, sort of eyes halberd up and down, and you see there's a, I can't tell whether these people have money or not, look that I'm going to, face. um, put myself, as I see her eyeing me, I'm going to put myself in a position of, um, kind of behind Rai, but very much of a uh, bodyguard type pose. Okay. Um, you see her sort of taking the makeup of a farmer's spec, actually, Halberd. We'll that against her insight. Okay. Performance? I'm not proficient in that at all, but it helps when you roll a natural 17, so an 18. Nice. That goes against her 16. Uh, so she she accepts the the change in, in station and addresses her gaze more directly at Rai. And there's a sort of uh, increasing respect you can see in her as she says, oh, okay, this lady got her own bodyguard. Obviously travel more and this might be someone I can do business with. And she greets you very graciously. Uh, Please, I am Amaral. What can I do for you? Oh, it's lovely to meet you, darling. Um, I have a delivery for you. I was wondering, do you have a, a private room where maybe we can go ahead and complete the exchange? I wouldn't necessarily want to do it out here in public. Oh, absolutely. And please, let me bring you some water. Oh, that'd be lovely, darling. Thank you. Um, just two gestures for the the person who had been uh, holding the palm fan at the front door. Um, to, to go and um, bring some water for you. She leads you um, around a, uh, to the side and into a back room. Um, there's a low table and cushions on the floor, and she goes to the other side of the table and sits herself on the cushion, and please, do be seated. Oh, thank you. It has been such a trying day. We have been trying so hard to come across um, your particular store, Golden Cog. Um, I'm a Sinatial. Sorry, I should introduce myself. My name is Rye. I'm a Sinatial for a lord down towards the south, and he has told a tale about Golden Cog. He found it fabulous and absolutely amazing, and sent me on the way to go there, which, obviously, you do not send a Sinatial by themselves. So this is my bodyguard, yes. Uh, so, uh, we were sent to Grimhold to see if we could find the Golden Cog, but um, we were informed that they're not actually ready for patrons yet, and they then forced us up to this direction, but they asked since we were on our path that we have a delivery for you so we are delivering it and i was hoping that maybe i could have a little bit more information to provide to my lord so that we can potentially become patrons of your fine services absolutely my cousins in Grimhold, as you say have not quite pre- finished their preparations to open this branch um shortly they will be capable of receiving orders and not quite on the magnitude of what we can provide here of course um do one moment, and she sort of calls for the water again to be brought, and 
business first and then pleasure after. And she uh, she she brings the water, please, a gift from my home to yours. And there's a certain sense of ceremony as she presents the water for you to consume. Um, I will make it a point to drink my water, like take a sip of the water first. Like. I will wait and then I will take a sip myself. And she drinks also. She sets her, her small cup back at the table uh, within easy reach. There is still a little bit. Um, the water is cool and clear. It is very refreshing. Um, now we have shared water. Uh, we may continue. The you, you mentioned you had a delivery. So now we conduct that business first. Uh, yes, yes, and I'll, I'll stop and be like, oh, I believe you are carrying it, uh, my darling. I'm going to step forward and pull it out from the robe, set the box, hand the box to Rye. Um, well, set it down gently. Uh, hopefully it doesn't have too much wear and tear. We tried our best, but, you know, the trials of travel. Of course, of course. Um, she pulls a small crystal out of her uh, a pouch at her waist. Um, and waves it over it. There's a brief golden glow, and then she tucks the crystal away and uh, sort of pries the lid up. Inside, you can see on a um, a velvet-lined bed are a, a number of small pearls um, of fairly good quality. Uh, everything, you would guess, close to... 1,500, 1,800 gold pieces worth of pearls. Um, it would be easier if you had more time to look at it, but she, she closes the box back up, she sets it to the side, and thank you, we will count this as payment towards that particular account. Um, now, you had mentioned having questions also for your lord. I must ask, uh, what sort of device construct do you know is he in the market for well first question to the dm um yes. is there anything about them that would be familiar the pearls anything about them that would be familiar to rye beyond just a gemstone um no okay. i don't think so Okay. Not that Rai would be familiar with at this point. Um, they are they're remarkably like fairly high quality pearls, um, but they don't. There's nothing in particular that catches her eye about them. Okay. Uh, yes. Well, this is something he has heard of a variety of different things, um, which. Some of this might be rumor. You know how things spread, darling. Uh, some things about them potentially being bodyguards, which, no offense, my dear, uh, but bodyguards that, you know, whenever you get in battle, you don't necessarily have to worry about them getting injured and having to deal with things like family members getting paid out, that sort of thing. Uh, he's also heard tale about them being able to clean houses for you, to do different tasks cooking, all of that sort of thing, which I must say, as I've been talking to different people about this, I've heard some very strange rumors in regards to these things. Everything from the fact that it is a new type of magic to it actually having people's souls inside of them, which that is quite a strange thing to hear, I must say, but I'm sure, like I said, they're all rumors. Oh, certainly. There are no souls attached to these particular constructs that we create. Can I check and see if I think she's telling the truth? Make an insight check. That is exactly why I did that. <laughs> Modifier, uh, no, that's a 21, actually. Oh, 21. Um, if she's not lying, she is dancing right on the edge of the truth. Um, so... What I just heard you say, sorry, because it was breaking up. She's not lying, but she's dancing on the edge. Yes. Okay. Um, there, uh, certainly there are arcane, um, oh, how, how shall we say this, uh, rituals that we undergo as their creators to power these creatures, these constructs, I should say, um, there are, 
I understand in, in some of the more advanced devices we create, uh, certainly an, an artifice of uh, intelligence and capability, and certainly there are a number of tasks that we can design them to fulfill. Uh, bodyguarding is essentially, or well, is certainly one of those we can accomplish. Uh, I do, I do admit that that is one of the more costly options. Um, most of our constructs can be designed to accomplish nearly any task that a human can be trained to do, to one extent or another. Um. I'm going to take another drink of the water, and I'll be like, yes, um, I'm, I do hate to inquire, because of, you know, business secrets and everything. You don't want to share your secrets with everyone. I do just need to push a little bit, if you can explain a bit more how the magic works, because, as I'm sure you can understand, uh, my lord is very, very interested in them. He's absolutely fascinated with all this new technology. But the lady of the house, she's a little, a little concerned about the uh, possible impact this might have on her children. So I was hoping maybe you can just give me a, a bit more of an explanation about what entirely is going on here. And I'd like to try and use hypnotic gaze. Okay. Um, remind me how that works. Um, they need to make a wisdom saving throw against my wizard spell, DC. Just really, really good. Really, really good. Drag, dragging her in with my gaze. Pulling up the stats here. Her wisdom <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's a four. <laughs> nice. Very nice. So, so what's the effect on that? Is it as a friends or? Um, they are charmed. Hang on, I just closed it. Okay. Uh, so you have an advantage on any ability check to interact socially with her. Fascinating. Okay. How do we want to do this? Um, Brian Hubbard going anywhere seems to be a dangerous combination. Oh, it's delightful. <laughs> Love it. It's great. But it works, though. It's one of my, it's one of my favorite combos. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I cannot give much detail of our our actual process away. Um, certainly there is no risk to any children or any consumer at all. We are uh, quite, quite safe in our practices here. To, we ensure that nothing can, no, no construct can be turned against the, um, the purchaser, shall we say. Well, then maybe um, if you, obviously you cannot tell me about the actual magics in play, but maybe if you can tell me a little bit more about where you uh, acquire such items um, to uh, imbue them with these magics, yes, because obviously we have delivered them from you, but know very little about what we have actually delivered. Friend you, mind you, I have no interest in actually uh, using any of this other than to assure my lady that this is entirely uh, something safe for her children. She's she's very meticulous about these things. I'm sure you have met these women. Oh, oh of course. Um, make a persuasion check. Um, go ahead and make it at advantage. That was terrible. That one's okay. Jesus! Hi, Mom! <laughs> 17. I my window earlier. I got a creeper outside. <laughs> okay. Hi, um, Mom. They said hi. Oh. Hi, y'all. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> anyway. Uh, 17, Go. right? Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, 
we we create these we build these concepts from scratch here in our workshop and we we enchant them ourselves to uh, fulfill their task and to uh, accomplish the the purpose for which they are designed and I must admit it is a taxing process. A number of these spells call for expensive and rare components. The, um, the charges that we, the, the, parts of, the cost of the item that we must maintain, uh, we are willing to waive or perhaps accept some of these components in lieu of payment. Um, if your lord has perhaps a, access to these we might be able to speak on that um, for reassuring the lady though i i can say only that the the arcane cost impact shall we say uh lies only with us as the creators uh once they are once they are assigned to a particular, um, to the one who purchases it, um, they will follow all their instructions. And um, those are those individuals are at no danger at all. Um, at all, I must I must be right. No, it's no danger at all to those individuals uh, who choose to purchase items. We have a long-standing history of uh, satisfied customers. Lovely. That's worthy. Uh, absolutely lovely. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned mm -hmm. that we could possibly procure some of these items in order to offset the balance, and I know my lord would be very, very interested in that. You know, you know lords. They are very, very frugal, and as much as they can, would like to avoid costs. Uh, so, um, I'm gonna cast suggestion. Oh. All the You're just going all out for this, aren't you? Well, we're going to go to bed soon. As long as it's not the long sleep. <laughs> all right. It's another wisdom saving throw. Okay, that one is an... 19. Succeeds. Um, so the question I was going to be like, so yeah, so if you could just tell me uh, what exactly the items are, and if maybe there's uh, information about the magics as well, so if there's anything we can do to help with that. Oh, um, I'm afraid the magics themselves are a family secret. Um, we're very protective of them. I'm sure you understand. Um, the items cover all sorts of material components. Uh, very frequently, we use uh, crystals that we imbue with certain arcane power to help these items function, these constructs to complete their task. Um, as, as you saw, your delivery of these pearls are uh, to, in this case, I believe, um, to aid in the hovering of a small construct. Um, the there are a number of other crystals of various qualities that are also used in this and a number of other magical components um depending on the the item in general we do occasionally farm out um various jobs and tasks to various adventurers that come through uh to to harvest uh, some creature parts or some Oh, rare ingredients that may be perhaps more dangerous to acquire. Is that something that your lord has access to? Some mercenaries or adventurers he's willing to perhaps um, uh, compensate for these services? Oh, I mean, look at my companion, darling. Yes, we do have access to such. Uh, well, certainly then. Um, um. Depending on the the construct, this uh, design that your lord would prefer, do you have any idea what sort of uh, 
task you would like ingrained into his uh, design? Oh my goodness, darling. He talked about so many things whenever he found out about this. He was just so thrilled about the idea. So he would talk about one thing. Oh, we can use them for bobby goggles. Then he talked about another thing. Oh, we can use them instead of our, our little farmers that we have. We can just switch them out with the farmers. He talked about so many things, darling. It's just, it's... I will have, once I have more information, I can find out from him what precisely he is looking for. He's a fickle lord. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know the type, like darling. I, I'm very well aware of the type. Um, is there is there anything else? Any other questions I might be able to answer for you this evening? Um, sorry, I was trying to see if, which you may have already figured this out or done this in regards to that, if Charm gives me any sort of advantage when it comes to those kind of spells, but I can't find it. Um, there is one final thing. Um, among the many things that my lord sent, again, he's quite a fickle lord. Uh, among the many things that my lord sent me to do whenever I was um, on this way, he has come across some information about an item that is held by a, a lord. Um, the lord. Yes, thank you, darling. Yes, the Underlord, he uh, said something about an Underlord. Um, could you possibly give me a bit more information about that? I've heard, again, I'm not sure how much of it is rumours, but everything from the fact that he's a very nice man, and you should be able to easily get what you need, to you are facing death to be to him, which, darling, that is quite a distance between the two. Uh, certainly. I'm... I believe the... First thing that I, I can tell you at this point is that um, dealings with the Underlord are of a more unsavory nature. Your Lord, you purport to claim, is quite uh, up to deal and well standing, and um, it's a bit, well, just not done. Uh, the Underlord is, is one of those unsavory types, and granted, I'm sure he has, he is well known for his collection, his uh, interest in being entertained. And there are many here in town who barter their services or their goods to him and make quite a living that way, I'm sure, but darling, he's just, just a bit unsavory. Uh, risky for sure, yes, very much so. And if you don't have some connection to him already and you do attempt to go straight to him for an audience, it can be quite dangerous from what I understand. Oh. Uh, Need a connection. Need a connection. Well, this is all very good to know. Um, just because I am not here for my own purposes, I'm here for my lords, just so I can maybe uh, emphasize to him the dangerousness of this. Do you know who would be one of those connections that he would have to to meet in order to get access to this underlord? Oh, I'm, I'm sure I don't know. Um, as I she said, it's very Make an insight check. Oh, that's good. That's a 15. A 15. Um, she doesn't seem to be lying, but there does seem to be this almost... A wishful, like she doesn't know, but she kind of wishes she did. This is very sort of interesting information to her, and although she would never dream of acting on it herself, she kind of wishes that she could. Cool. Um, so... Understandably, you have no knowledge of this. Do you know the types of places where one might gently inquire to see if you could make those connections? Um, make one more persuasion check. Uh, at advantage. Nineteen. Nineteen. Well... There are a number of, I would say, unsavory folk 
uh, in the noon crest, the westernmost part of town. If there's something unsavory going on, chances are you'll probably find it there. There is one more thing in, regla- in regards to the um, constructs. Um, <laughs> <coughs> oh my goodness. Um, my lord uh, is very, very interested in bringing these types of things down here. Uh, but I do understand the fact that maybe there is a bit of a connection that you would want to make first. So if you were wanting to perhaps send something like an assistant or an apprentice up here to learn from you, that way we could maybe bring a branch down and then manner or method he would be able to do so oh oh no i'm afraid that it is all kept within the family even though the uh, branch that is being opened in grimhold are uh, my cousins in fact who are heading out that way oh, that must be a very large family you have darling uh, perhaps not as large as you think ah very interesting but uh just because you're so capable that you don't need that many people to help you or uh, not large because some unfortunate things have happened recently, darling. I'm so sorry to hear about that. Uh, We are quite capable indeed. And, um... Make another persuasion check. (laughs) Just a regular with advantage. With advantage. She's still charmed, right? How long does that last? (laughs) Forever. Um, hang on, I'm really, where were you earlier? Um, 25. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, while we did have a bit of a setback, shall we say, when uh, my brother chose to leave the family business some two, two, two and a half, two years ago. Um, we, we have quite recovered. Um, my sisters and I do handle the business that comes through, and my father takes good care of us to maintain the business. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about your brother. That's very terrible. Uh, I had a brother myself. We had a very terrible falling out. I am so sorry to hear about that. Um, is there anything, maybe if we ran across him, I could try and talk to him about potentially coming back and aiding you? No. <laughs> he is gone and will not return. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear about that, darling. Ominous. Very ominous. Interesting. Um, Longest dirt nap. I am very sorry to hear about that, darling. Uh, perhaps we are very religious people. Perhaps we can say a prayer for him. Would you be able to give me his name? Ooh. Yeah, why don't, why don't we go ahead and we'll do that? Um, if you choose to pray for his soul, pray for Renan. Say that name again. Renan. Thank you. Will do, darling. I am I am so sorry. Family is quite dear, and I am sorry that there has been a situation in regards to yours. Um, I am sure it is quite late, and I do not want to keep you any longer, darling. Uh, do you have perhaps a pamphlet or something I could take back to my lord? Uh, certainly. Uh, one moment, and I will have those retrieved for you. And she... Um, she summons the, the servants to come in again and whispers a few things into his ear and sends him off. Um, would you care for any more water while you wait? Oh, darling, I we have to head to dinner quite soon after this. And this has been so delicious and so lovely, but I'm afraid I'm going to have a full stomach and then it will be, you know, midnight and all of a sudden I will be hungry again. And we just cannot have that. So I think I will pause on the water for now, but thank you Oh, you're very welcome. Um, the servant comes back, brings a small pamphlet uh, with information about the Golden Cog and detailing the sorts of services that they provide. Um, it's it's handwritten, uh, but 
there are a few uh, very detailed drawings. Um, obviously, a lot of care has gone into creating this product. Um, it's not necessarily something that they just hand out to everyone. Uh, thank, thank you very much, darling. Yeah, by all means. Uh, now, when when your lord comes, do you do you happen to have his title that we can greet him appropriately? Uh, yes, it is uh, Duke Kizator Valsoran. Okay. Oh, that's wow, that's quite, a, quite a, a promotion you just got there, case of toy. I didn't realize we were in Lordship. I'm not going to have any name to use in any town on this planet. <laughs> no. I was just, unaware that case of was a dupe. So. You're still unaware of that. <laughs> yes. Hi, case of Oh, Lord, how are you doing, case of Yes, my Lord. I'm just going to start calling you Fred. Yes, I like Fred. Hey, Dookie. Um, well then, please do not let me keep you. Um, we shall we shall greet your lord with all due respect when he arrives. Um, if you have any further questions or need for our services, please do come again. Of course, Alec. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening. Oh, you as well. And you, Sir Al. The blessings of your people be on you. Um, as we're leaving, does it appear that this is? Um, a shop and that there's like living rooms, like an apartment above the store, or does it look like it's just a shop? Um, make a perception check. No, no. It's, <laughs> um, it's, you it's saw, a seven. You, you saw the front sort of for your area. Um, where people are met and greeted, and you were led to a small side room. You know that there's a second story, and you know that there are rooms farther back, but you don't really guess what the purpose is. Okay. That's it for me. All right. Good deal. Um, we'll we'll go ahead. Holy. Real quick, since we are starting to run out of time, um, let's go ahead and jump to Silyx and Doran. Oh, okay. God. Well, um, uh, I will go shortly after they have departed. We will drop our traveling gear. Um, yeah. Go upstairs to the, uh, well, I keep Soren. No relation in name. I would imagine. Oh, uh, and I'll go up to him and say, <laughs> Well, a quick question for you, good sir. You see, we were, uh, some of our party that we came in with were attempting to accomplish uh, whatever task they were sent with. I believe they had to meet with a, the Golden Cog. I don't know anything about that or care. I'm far more interested in uh, the, the feel of this city and the people within it. Information, where the stories can be told. Could you tell me of such a place? Or perhaps are we standing in the very place where uh, the great storytellers come to share their adventures and tales of their travels? Uh, we'll get some tall tales told over a mug of ale or so. Uh, if you're wanting that sort of entertainment, certainly we can provide. Uh, if you're wanting something a little more codified, you'll want to go either to the temples in the old quarter, or perhaps the library in the stone tower. All right. Uh, I must be honest, part of my reason for agreeing to accompany these individuals is I have heard tales of an entity not too far from here known as the Underlord. He seems uh, mysterious, and I, for, well, I'm quite anxious to find out more about him. I know nothing but a name, and uh, with a name so ominous as that, I feel it to be quite the challenge to encounter such an individual. Indeed. Uh, uh, he sort of 
looks around and leans in a little closer and lowers his voice. If you're watching, is he leaning down any too, or <laughs> just to the big? Uh, the big guy is the guy who's been talking, so he's aware of you, but he's directing most of his responses to Silly X. Um, if you want and tale of the Underlord, I might could know a place or two. You could get some more information. Well, besides our fine patronage, I do happen to uh, be burdened by heavy weight that keeps me from traveling quickly. And I reach into my bag and pull out five gold pieces and just put them on the, the counter next to him. You see his eyes get quite large in, in an establishment that charges by the silvers. Gold like this comes along, but not very often. Um, certainly, sir. And there's a, a marked uh, respect that seems to come over him now. Uh, by all means, you were saying you were wanting the Underlord, and he's to be of assistance. What exactly are you wanting to know? Well, the best way to uh, gain an audience with such a individual and really anything uh, about him who what what is he exactly what the company he might keep uh, anything that might help us uh, at least help me get as close as possible to him without dying let's see the trick is going to be getting close to him he does not ever leave his lair shall they call it. He has minions, folk he sends to accomplish his will, to bring him things that are new and pretty and interesting for, in some way, something to catch the attention or that he's not seen or heard before. Um, to fan of trinkets or tales? Mostly trinkets. If you tell a tale, it, might, it better be a good one. If he's not pleased or not entertained, well... Many of those that go in with just a tale to tell do not return. What sort of trinkets does he like? Oh, many kind. Those who are pretty or interesting. Something magical or something to catch his eye. I doesn't seem to follow much of a trend. He's hard to predict. He doesn't seem to... He is easily amused by the things that most folk do. What you said he sends his minions. What type of creatures or people could we does he send out and do you know what we might encounter, said person? Not many folk claim to be in his employ, but there are some of those who well, fallen desperate straits, shall we say, who will take his coin or whatever they need from him. And, uh, most of them <laughs> he looks and spits sort of on the ground. Half orc. Around here, most of those half orcs, filthy though they are, are there in his employ. Some other monstrous folk, some monster kin, half breeds that they are, will take his coin and good riddance to them if they disappear. Fantasy racism! Um, you. Again, uh, I know really not what to name. Also, by the way, that wasn't in character, just in case we were not clear. <laughs> <laughs> what, um. What exactly is the Underlord? No one ever refers to him as a. As a person, he seems to be more of an entity or a being. Hi. Very en uh, enigmatic. Enigmatic. I... There's a certain mystery to it. And to be honest, I don't know. He's a bit... He doesn't think like normal folk do. We're not sure if he's some... Elven kind, you know, gone mad from the lack of his people around him, or some 
underdwelling creature brought to the surface. You feel personally attacked? Was that right? Seems very, uh, ominous. I suppose you like to keep it that way. Do you happen to know if anybody in town who has gone to see him and lives long enough to return? I... There's an entertainer makes his home not too far from the heights. Uh... Does a good business. Claims to have been there and entertained the Underlord himself. Come back with enough riches to, well, start a new life if you wanted. Oh, do you have the name of this person? Fiskin. Fiskin? Fiskin. Elven half breed. Fiskin with an F? Yes. Okay. F-I-S-K-I-N. And, um, you said his establishment is where we could find him, yes? He rotates. He performs at a number of high-end inns. Uh, you wouldn't happen to know the location of one of those? Or the name? Uh, sometimes he's at the Tempest Shadow. Can't speak for that consistently, though. Wonderful. Well, ah, uh, that's great amount of information you have shared. And seeing as how my party has not returned, I do believe we can. Uh... Well, Dorn, what do you say to hang out here and? Give some fair business to our, our patron. Perhaps Hi. talk to any others who might happen to uh, come into the establishment. Hear tales of this great city we seem to find ourselves in. Yes. I pull out the, uh, I don't know, the gold, I guess, and get drinks for us. Right. Wonderful. He swipes the gold off the counter and I drinks for you right away. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. And we'll just, uh, with that information, we'll wait here for the party to come back so we can come up with a further plan. All right. And then uh, Val and Kazator, where are we all headed? My racer. I think to find a library or scriptorium or something of that sort, unless Val had a. Stop first. Yeah. Somewhere where we can find the books. Also, want to keep an eye out for a temple. Okay. Like, to any, any deity. Um, as y'all are... How, how are y'all wanting to do this? Describe to me how you go about this. Uh, probably find somebody to ask directions from. Um, to specifically to like either a library, like you said, or a, uh, a place of books, um, and then on the way, keep an eye out for temples. Alright. Um, make an investigation check. I will inspire Val. Alright. And I'll just sing, I hope that you'll find what you're looking for. Do, 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 uh, uh, uh. Okay, Jordan, you're doing your style, that's awesome. Um, that's a D8, is that right? That is correct. For now. It doesn't take you too awful long to find someone who can point you in the direction of the library. Um, they they guide you to the eastern part of the city in the district known as the Stone Tower, where uh, the buildings are significantly older and look like they've actually been built from the stone uh, that the walls of the valley are made out of. Um, the library itself is at the northern part of the district, and it's about a two and a half hour walk from the Beggar's Banquet to get there. Um, so you get there and you arrive, and it is 
Uh, well, after sunset. Any chance morning, we could hire like a cart or like a? I said, is there any chance we get a? We could hire like a cart, horse and cart or something to, to take us there. Taxi. Is Taxi. that a, a thing in Saint <laughs> France? Yes. Um, you can certainly try. Um, go ahead and make a. Actually, no. You both of y'all are fairly perceptive people. Um. You go ahead and we'll say that you, you do see one and you do manage to flag one down. Um, the city itself is starting to be a little more heavily populated. The cart will cost... Oh, come here. Um, we'll say about a silver for each of y'all um, to get from the new point up into the Stone Tower District. Um, and it'll shave about an hour off. So you'll still get there about half hour after sunset. Uh, there's still a little bit of walking that you'll have to do because the streets do get a little narrower in the older section of town. Um, you, do, you do manage to find the library uh, and it has already been shut down for the evening. Um, it is, is not active. Um, Val, as you've been walking and going through the cab ride and keeping out, you haven't seen a whole lot of religious iconography. No temples in particular stand out. However, you get to the library and you do see there is a symbol of uh, the knowing mistress of Ione carved by the door. Is it like prominent or is it kind of hidden? Um, it's not hidden per se. Um, it's it's not. I mean, it's not hugely painted on the side of the building, but it's a, a carved into the stone on the side of the door. Only Val sees it. Um, if he was the one who'd been looking out for it, it's not hard oh, okay. to see. Um. But he can draw your attention to it fairly easily. Okay. When I see this around the library or place of learning, I start looking for any signs that would alert me to my family's presence. All right. Um, make a perception check. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Um, for where you're at currently, on the outside of the library, there's nothing that immediately catches your eye. Okay. Fair enough. This was a it's unfortunate waste, but at least now we know where to begin looking tomorrow. I turn around real quick, is the cabbie driven off yet? He's in the process of starting to try to turn around. The streets are narrow, and it's having a little bit of difficulty. Do we want to ride back, Val? Yes, why not? Now let out a New York cabby whistle. <laughs> <laughs> that I was about to do, and then I realized that's probably not a good idea into a microphone. Please, <laughs> no. Well, you start to see premieres. All right. Um... Another silver piece for each of y'all to be taken back to New Point in the Beggar's Banquet, close to the entrance of the city. You, by this time, pretty much y'all will be the last people to reunite back at the uh, Beggar's Banquet. All right. Let everybody know library was closed. We'll have to go back tomorrow. <laughs> Question. Halbert and Rye. Y'all are both looking at me kind of funny. After you left the Golden Cog, did you go back to the Beggar's Banquet, or was there something else you wanted to do? I... Go ahead, Rye. No, no, I thought you had wanted to go sit in on that meeting, or near that meeting. Yes, I was thinking about um, walking, depending on how late it was, because we got there at the start of the evening, I didn't think their conversation would have taken too long. I was going to walk down towards the address um, where the Brotherhood was, is what I thought. At least walk by and um, scope it out as a passerby. 
All right. Um, if I found out it wasn't going to be super far away, I would have asked someone for direction. So. All right. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll give you the directions for that. It is going to be by walk about another 45 minutes or so from the Golden Cog. Um, you're going to have to go around the southern tip of the largest oasis in the city and a little bit west in order to get there. Um, it is situated in the old quarter. Um, question? Yes. I have dimension door. Does that cut anything off of the trip? I mean, how many times do you want to use it? <laughs> Because, I mean, that's 500 feet right there where you can take a step and you don't have to walk it. And if you do it again, that's another 500 feet. That's that's what my question is. Is it, like, if we're just, rather than going around a bunch of things, just, like, point A to point B? Um, it would cut maybe... Maybe 10 minutes off. Um, if you wanted to take a little bit more of a direct route. So, but it, it, there's still... I'll, I'll, I will text y'all a picture of the rough map of White Brand um, so that y'all will be able to see general locations uh, for where things are at. Um, and that will give you a little bit of an idea. Um, but you can walk by there, and it's set in a... Um, more religious area of the town um you pass by a couple other uh temples and shrines set up to a variety of deities um this Not is also bahamut. uh no including in bahamut but his is not any more prominent than any of the others um this is also where the um sort of civil sector civil sector of the city the um where where day to day operations are where um the the guards have their headquarters where the uh judges and the um the city seat essentially where that is is in this quarter. And Lauren, just a quick question. Wait quarter did he say the that uh, Fiskin was in? What's the name of that one? Um, I don't think he said where he, he, he said it was where the, the richer place. Like right, near the heights. He said it's near the heights. Okay. Um, so it's the heights were in what? Y'all are in New Point, which New is Point. The, the part of the city closest to the entrance. Kind of slummy a little bit? Like, I imagine... A little bit. It's not terribly nice. It's not yeah. actual slums. Uh, that's that's edging into another part of the city. Um, and where was they? Where were they talking about? Where all the religious people were at? What district was that? That's the old quarter. So, okay. And that is northwest of where y'all are at in New Point. Close to the heights or no? Um, you can get to the heights by going through the old quarter. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Um, as we walk by this area where the, the address where the Brotherhood said come to this place, okay. um, in comparison to everything around, the religious structures around, um, what does it look like? Is it more prominent? Is it more well known? They've got flyers and information out on the boards. Is this some place that's pretty prominent as far as the religious sec sector goes? And then... Am I seeing brotherhood symbols on some of the civic buildings as well? Um, the, the address itself is fairly indistinguishable from a lot of the other uh, temples and um, buildings on this street that it's on. Um, it's fairly modest, uh, not extravagant or um, it doesn't stand out necessarily from the rest of it. And you're not seeing any particular um, signs or sigils or marks 
on these uh, civic buildings specifically re relating to the Brotherhood. Okay. I'm guessing traffic is, because it's later at night, traffic is dying down and there's not a lot of traffic. Uh, actually, there are more people out on the street here in the evening and into the night than there were during the day. Uh, it's it's cooler. significantly cooler. In fact, it's starting to get a little chilly. Uh, but the oppressive heat of the afternoon that y'all had felt earlier as you had been approaching the city is gone. It's more refreshing. All right. Um, what time is it when we're walking by? We'll say it's probably close to 9 o'clock in the evening, uh, about the time that y'all are walking by the uh, Brotherhoods. Um, if you're all right, Miss Dry, I don't want to stay too long and stand out, but um, I would like to watch for the next two, three minutes, just see, get a scope, and then head back to our crew. Oh, not at, not at all a problem, darling, not at all a problem. Um, then I'd just like to kind of stand off to the side of the road, um, outside, no in particular temple, um, not really making a show of anything, actually just honestly kind of fitting into the, the wall, if you will, just be someone in a conversation with Rai, but watching who comes and goes out of the Brotherhood's temple. Okay. Uh, make a perception check. <laughs> For a second. Yeah. Well, what a great way to end the night. It's a nap. <laughs> um, Bug flies in his eye. It distracts him. It's a nap. Desert nap. Just one nap. Nap one. You are a little distracted by the people who are coming out on the street. Um, you almost miss the uh, green dragonborn who comes out from the temple, tidies up a little bit, uh, sweeps up the mat, and then heads back in. Rise Mentor is evil. Rise, <laughs> <laughs> kill killer now. Did you recognize uh, no. I can answer that easily, no. <laughs> um, the rest of the couple minutes that y'all are there passes pretty quietly. There is a little bit of motion inside, but it's fairly quiet. Actually, what she probably would have said to you is, no, darling, Donna is dead. Mm. That's what you thought. <laughs> um, he just told you that to escape. Oh, yeah. Really, his parents sent him to a nice, happy farm. Uh, <laughs> if you said that to her, she gave you the nastiest look. Wow. No, I wouldn't have said that. No, but on the way back, I would like to just take note, because up to this point... The chromatic dragonborn that we've interacted with have all been in disguise. Yes. Um, so I would like to know, am I seeing more chromatic dragonborn out and about on the streets? Just as we're walking back and dialoguing, because I was oblivious for the most part over there. Um, make a perception check. There's actually a good point. Is there anything that I would have noticed just in my brief time outside today? Because that, that would, they, they would have stood out very blatantly to me if I'd seen the I mean, it wasn't outside much. What a way to come back. All right. Can I make that my last roll for the day, please? <laughs> Don't you want to make the roll? What was the total? Uh, uh, 29. Okay. Uh, um, the vast majority of the people in Whiteband are human. 
Um, there are a couple of dwarves and a couple of halflings, and you actually see a, a decent number of gnomes. Uh, you don't see any of the other chromatic cra- dragonborn. You don't see any other metallic dragonborn in this section of the city, as y'all are uh, uh, traveling back. Um, you do see one or two other half orcs. Um, one or two. Uh, goblinoids, um, but not many, and they they stick to the sides and the the darker alleys, and they're not in the main part of the street. They stay out of traffic pretty well for the most part. Um, in fact, it's their almost their stealth, their sneakiness that draws your attention, Halberd. These are people who are trying very hard to go about and do their business without being noticed. Interesting. They're so cool. sneaky, they stand out. Hmm. Just, you know what to look for. Cool. Alright. Albert, now that we're on White Brand, were you going to make one more attempt at the puzzle? Uh, if she was going to let me. I was going to wait for her to let me know about that. Right. Um, if you want to make it and have that nat 20 not be the last of the night, you can do that. <laughs> or we can do that first thing on the next session. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just just wait until I get a chance to talk with Kaysator and get some advice on this puzzle. <laughs> All right. He's smarter than I. Go ahead. Y'all are in the process of reuniting back at the Beggar's Banquet, and we will stop the session there. Okay. Uh, Avengers, Ooh. assemble. We got some Avengers information assemble. to tell each other. I got to let you guys know about the South Elf. Got it. Gather, and then I feel like we're going to be here for another day. <laughs> we got things to go do. Cool session. Yep. Yeah. Alright then. Cool, JoJo. Yeah. JoJo 2.0. Yeah, this will be, it'll be interesting to see what happens with him. Does he have two hit points now? <laughs> Hold on. Uh, JoJo at this point has... One he was a tiny creature, he's now small, so he might actually have, like, you know, five. Whoa. Uh, what's your hit die, Jordan? D8. D8, is that right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Or, yeah. I know, I know. So yeah, he'll have a D8 plus one. Do I roll that? You can. Oh, or you can take five, and that'll be average, or six. Five would be the average. Wrong. Okay. Roll it. I'm scared. Roll <laughs> it. Oh, I rolled it. He has two. Do it. You roll roll it. it. I rolled really well on my last hit die for the last two levels, so I'm... <laughs> So get it out of the way on yeah, there. blocks. <gasps> oh, it's a three. <laughs> I hit you both. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, kill him and then bring him back and maybe he'll get more when you resummon him. <laughs> I don't know. I was going to say, I don't know. How, yeah, I'm not going to purposely go, obviously, but I don't know how it works because he doesn't bamf in and out of a pocket anymore. He goes into my tattoo. I don't know what happens when he dies. Uh, now you know hey. You can resummon him. He's magical. You'll be fine. Can yeah, I, yeah. I really do wonder how that octopus really works. Work. I know. I'm kind of. I'm. I'm, I'm kind of loving the whole octopus idea. Very limited um, use. <laughs> yeah. One thing. One thing. But it could give With the other up. forms, Jordan. Yes. Um. With the other forms that you can take. Mm-hmm. Um. We didn't get a chance to go over this in session today, and it'll. Yeah. I'm debating whether I want to make you hold off on it or whether I want to tell you now. So, would you like the information for it now, or would you like it when it's relevant? Because there is a buff that you get from JoJo when he is in this form now. And the buff changes depending on his form. Um, you can t- you can turn him into any of the other three forms, okay. but you won't get the buff if he's in those three forms. Oh. Okay. Oh. Interesting. 
So this is his primary form. This is his primary form. Okay, Jojo Prime. It's not. It's not even his final form. <laughs> You know, he from tiny to small, next he'll upgrade to medium, and by the end of this campaign, he'll be large. She really Stop wanted to get something to grow. She was like, I miss Kyra. I want to make something else. I'm going to make it, instead of a dragon, I'm going to make it a flying fox. To all the haters who said, don't yeah. use additional magic, magic secrets to take a first level spell, I'm so glad I did. <laughs> no, we never hated you. Instead of dispel magic, who needs that? We never hated you. <laughs> For, for Find Familiar, it was the fact that you took flame arrows <laughs> over counter spell. That's where the issue is. Are we still alive? I yes. Yeah. yes, we are. We love you guys. I got counter spell as a bar and I don't. It's okay. okay. It's okay, guys. We only need two more levels. Okay. Two more levels. You gotta get a level 10. That's right. Right. Yep. Get us out of this practice. Well, it was really good to hang out with y'all. It was an awesome session. I had a lot of fun with that one. I hope y'all did too. Oh, um, and y'all, yeah. thank you for joining us today. Um, thanks for tuning in for the adventure that we goofy people just have fun <laughs> with. Um, we will see y'all next week at the same time. Um, until then, stay safe. Stay healthy. Hands. I know we're all hearing it everywhere, but we can only do what we can do, and that's one thing that we can do. So, yeah, fun times. Fun times. All right. Love you guys. Y'all have a good week. Bye.